in like three seconds. Hello, welcome to the Mature Topics Podcast, the podcast that continues and never stops. <laughs> we got early on the podcast, we got Sherry and, and Launch Pro. What's up, what's up, guys? Hey. I think this might be the first time I, I, we started the podcast with you know other people on. Normally it's just me, but that's cool. <laughs> That's cool. So, everybody, welcome to the show. You know, uh, the Mature Topics podcast is a place where we can have real conversations, um, you know, discuss relationship issues from mental health to domestic violence. Sometimes we bring experts on the panels or those with experience. And, you know, we bridge the gap between them and the lay people who may not have experience with these topics. Right. So and also this is an open panel discussion. So definitely you'll be able to click the link in the bio. I'm about to put it in there right now. If you want to join the podcast, feel free, you know, to get on. You know, this is definitely an open panel podcast. And um, I just want to lay some ground rules. If you do join the podcast, right, definitely make sure you have a clear mic because, oh, man, sometimes when I'm editing the clips, it's hard to, you know, get the sound right. So definitely make sure you have a clear mic um, and, and you don't have to show your camera if you don't want to. But, you know, I prefer if you do. But it's okay if you don't want to show your camera as well. But just at least make sure you have a clear mic. Another thing, too, I want to say is salute to the Mature Topics Facebook group. You know, it's growing. You know, like every day, you know, there's a lot of um, people joining the group. We're growing. And um, oh, if you at 200, group, 200 members. Almost at 200 members. So if you haven't joined the group, definitely take the time. The link is in the description of this video. If you want to go join the uh, Mature Topics Facebook group. Um, and another thing I like to say, support the show. You know, mm -hmm. we have multiple ways you can support the show. The first way I would love for you to support the show, hit that like button. That like button helps us in the algorithm. Hit that like button. Um, we have a cash app, Quran P in the bottom right corner. Um, if you want to, you know, send a monetary donation. Um, we also have an Amazon affiliate link as well in the description of the video. So you don't even have to send money. If you shop on Amazon, just use the affiliate link. And we'll be able to, you know, um, that will help the channel. So I do want to play the clip from the last trailer. Um, mm -hmm. I try to each each episode early on. I try to promote the, uh, the clips for people to check out. So this is a, uh, the clip from the last episode, episode ten with Kemi and uh, uh, Nick. I respect her. Right? I respect right? this woman suing this man. All y'all have is what, Kunga? Audacity. Audacity! Sure. Somebody has to take sure. the fall for the rest of y'all. Yeah, but you don't sue somebody because for $10,000? $10,000? Because you wasted my damn time. What you're very angry about. I'm not angry. These are scenes from the previous episode in the Mature Topics podcast. Subscribe and watch <laughs> it now on the Quran PA YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so you get all your notifications. And like the video so more people can see the video. That's so that's a clip. Um, so that's good. A clip. We was talking about um, the lady who sued her date for uh, $10,000 because he didn't show up or something like that. So yeah, that, that was a crazy episode. That episode was definitely lit. Check out the clip. The link to that video is also in the description so you can check that out. So um, tonight we have three topics. So as you can see on the top, we have the IG model receives outpouring support um, for our AIDS battle, right? And Launch, you're going to lead the charge with that story because you 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 got all the okay. insight, right? Well, um, and the, the main topic is um, in relationships, do we operate from fear and love, right? Um, we're going to talk about that. And the reason why we came up with that topic is because Launch, she sent me an interview with Angie Martinez. And um, Lauren London talking about, you know, how she feels about love. And, you know, Lantra said this would be a good, uh, you know, topic for the for the episode. So I was like, yo, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? So and then we also going to be talking about the pastor that was robbed in Brooklyn. It's not funny, but it's 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 a lot of backstory with this, like, you know, a lot of uh, stuff going on. I'm definitely curious to hear Sherry's feedback on this because, you know, I know she's into the Bible. I'm not sure if she's. You go to church, but I know you're into the Bible, so I'm curious to know, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so those yeah. are the three topics for tonight. If you're in the chat, if you're um, watching the show, you want to join the uh, panel, 
feel free. Or you could just chime away in the chat. You know, we also uh, respond and communicate through the chat. So I want to get to the main topic. Um, do we operate out of fear or from love and relationships, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I know I have in the... Um, I didn't get a chance to put together no slides. Mm -hmm. Super crazy day. But that's okay. I got I take great notes. So um one of the things I, I I talked about in the hold on before I do that, let me let me put this link in here because people gonna try to jump on and they're not gonna be able to. So hold on, let me put this link in here real quick. Hard to multitask. So one of the things I want to talk about is how to overcome uh the fear of intimacy. And um, I had a really good article here on this. Hold on one second. Why isn't it letting me put the link? Okay, I got to go into YouTube. Give me a second. I will put the link in the YouTube. But let me just uh, talk about this um, fear of intimacy. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about it a little bit. So the fear of intimacy um, is also referred to as intimacy avoidance or avoidance anxiety and it's characterized as fear of sharing a close emotional or physical relationship people who experience this fear don't don't usually wish to avoid intimacy and may even long for closeness but frequently push others away or even sabotage relationships now some of this sounds a little bit like what lauren may be going through because she's like she don't want to deal with love you know she <laughs> you what know, was she well, saying on the podcast well i mean she said a lot <laughs> Um, I didn't listen to the whole podcast, but I listened I listened to enough to know where she was coming from because what happened was Angie asked a question, where are um where are you with love? And it's funny, like, you know, woman, you guys can get away with asking questions like that. A man couldn't couldn't ask that. Mm -hmm. You know, and Angie just came and she was like, Yo, where are you with love? And then she was like After the death of after the death of Nipsey Hustle. Uh, yeah, after the death of Nipsey Hustle. And what she said was, her first response was, mm -hmm. um, she's kind of done with it because she finds that relationships are ego-driven and they're mm -hmm. not married, right? And she and she said something like to the regards of putting death to the ego, right? Mm -hmm. I, I guess what she means, because Angie, you know, sort of towards the end of the podcast or the end of that clip, sort of cleared it up and said, sounds like you, you're talking about fear, operating from fear in your relationship. So it was a little cloudy, you know, like. Well, I, can I share my views on it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Cause I watched like the full podcast as well as like the clip where she was talking about her experience with love after the death of Nipsey Hussle. And what I got from it was that she, what she stated was that she is not interested in you know pursuing love um for the for the finality of her time here on earth she said that she already experienced pure love in her relationship with nipsey hustle right. and she doesn't desire to uh pursue love with anyone else and in particular right. her reasoning for not wanting to pursue love with anyone else was that she's in the process of uh, allowing the ego to die. So what that means is how she related it in her relationship with Nipsey Hussle is that she had she to possessive. learn not to be possessive over yes. her partner. And she was possessive, you know, like a lot of us tend to be. Um, right. She had expectations of her partner. She held on to her partner so much so that it's like, no, don't ever leave me because it's like holding on to not just the love that you have for your partner, but their physical presence in your life, as well as the future or what your life looks like with that person there. And she feels right. as though she held on so tight and for it to just slip through her fingers the way that it did because life happened right. made it extremely difficult for her to say, well, you know what, after this experience with Nipsey, I'm going to dive into something else where, yeah. you know, like I'm holding on to someone and they slip through my fingers again. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So like from from that aspect, death to the ego, as she was explaining it, is a process that she's uncovering and undergoing to sort of like learn from her mistakes in that relationship with Nipsey, right. but also to evolve to a point in which she doesn't need to to have a partner to validate her humanity, to validate her life, you know, in this world. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need to be romantically involved. So in essence, what I got from her really was that that was like a really philosophical and beautiful explanation to I'm still grieving and ain't no other man can replace. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Like, I feel like she's going, she's, she's still grieving and and rightfully so. I mean, that was her husband, the love of her life. You know, for him to die so sudden, you know, that and so and young. Tragically, and, and just, yeah. Tragically, it 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 that right there definitely will take a long time to recover. It will take right. a long time. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I I get it and I respect it. Um, I just feel like while she's going through this process, she definitely has to sort of figure. You know, she's still figuring it out. Yeah. You know, because it was a little. I'm not going to say confusing. I'm going to say, she, I guess she probably didn't want to go too deep because she probably feels like her views are, you know, kind of different, right? Yeah. And she don't want to be, because she because she even hinted like, oh, I know they're going to say a lot of crazy things about me, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I, I, I know, I'm not sure if you want me to go in too deep on this topic, but um, yeah, I think that, you know, I think you hit it on the nail. I think that was a great, a summary of of uh, you know what she you know what she was talking about on that interview. Mm-hmm. So so that's why I was that's why I, I wanted to talk about the fear of intimacy because that this this could be something that people are going through. Yeah, um, and not only because it was a good question for you two, but anyway. So I just want <laughs> I just want to get this out for <laughs> for a little bit, right? So so intimacy, okay, that's the ability. Uh, to share yourself with another person, you know, mm-hmm. um, your experiences, uh, get close, establish some type of connection, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have intellectual intimacy, emotional intimacy, sexual intimacy, uh, exper- experiential intimacy, and spiritual intimacy, right? So having a fair intimacy will prevent you from experiences or hinder your ability to experience those different forms of intimacy, right? Mm-hmm. So... And, and when we talk about fear of intimacy, we're talking about fear of being vulnerable, right? Um, not being comfortable with being vulnerable. And we know, and as you know, Launch, being vulnerable is like top 10 of, of you know, the, the qualities you would need to, you know, or, or characteristic or uh, you can help me with the words, but like that's something important. For relationship. In relationships, yeah. You have to be vulnerable. So fear of intimacy prevents you from being yeah. vulnerable, right? So some of the causes, uh, you have fear of abandonment. Um, one that can be uh, also linked to Lauren. You know, she could feel like Nipsey, uh, you know, not that he left her, but he passed so, so sudden that, you know, maybe that can cause some uh, fear of abandonment issues in the future. So she, right now she's at a point where she doesn't even want to move forward, right? And um, so that's what I want to say on this. Fear of intimacies. Because I could talk for an hour on this. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, fear of intimacy, right? Um, if you are going through fear of intimacy on this show, we always, you know, direct you to the experts, definitely go get some help. Um, It's something that can be considered a disorder. So it's not something that's just lightly like, oh, I'm depressed today. It it really could be a disorder. Go, you know, seek professional help, man. Get get somebody that you can talk to to help sort you uh, through your thoughts and help you through this process. I don't want to go too much further, but I do... I have a question. Um, I have a question for you, Launch. And and Sherry. 
You there, Lunch? She's probably behind the scenes handling business. Hold on. No lunch, you're not there? Was muted. So, I'm, right, my, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, your mic was muted. So I want to know, um, do you believe yeah, that... Yeah, I'm going to go uh, in and... Couples that, my, um, my sound is just off. Huh? Yeah, you was chipping out a little bit. Maybe you want to no. uh, go out and come back in? Yeah, I'm coming back in. Yeah, definitely. So, Sherry, hey, are you familiar with this with this um story with uh Lauren London and Angie Martinez? You I only caught a clip of it on like the shade room. Oh, okay, was it the seven minute clip or was it like a like a short clip? It was like a short clip. Um, I did hear like other people okay. talking about it. I didn't have an opportunity to like watch it in thorough. But um, okay, you don't know how qualified I am to talk about the clip. No, nah, no, nah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I want to know because I'm I'm not sure if you caught what what Launch was saying because she really broke down exactly uh, what she spoke with with Angie. Mm -hmm. One of the things she was saying was she wanted to put death to the ego and all ego really like the ego for her. I feel like represents a lot of different things. And one of the things that it represent was put being possessive um, um, and being selfish, mm -hmm. right? So I want to know, do you believe that, because I know you was in a relationship and, you know, you, you know, we all been in relationships that didn't work out. Right. So do you feel as though the ego, selfishness, or, or even... Um, Operating out of fear. Now, oper we didn't talk about what operating out of fear is. Uh, operating out of fear can mean a lot of different things. Yes. Um, what some of the people, because we put this post up in the group, what, what some of the people uh, were talking about was like fear to, uh, for example, like fear to leave a relationship because they depended on their spouse in some way. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I, I, I can't leave because... You know, I don't know how am I going to, you know, take care of myself financially mm -hmm. or um, I don't want to leave, you know, break up the home. I don't want to leave my kids alone. Right. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm trying to see how to put this together. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just saying there's so many fears, though. Like you see there's like some women who don't want to leave because they think that they can't get better or they're not going to get. Yeah. Control. So so many different types depends on the personality. But um. I don't, I want to get your question. I don't know yet. So uh, what I want to know is, are ego driven, is, is, the, is the fact that the ego, people are so caught up in their ego, is that something that maybe if we weren't so selfish or we had a more balanced outlook, would we have greater success in our in our relationships? I'm, were you were you on the episode when we were talking about um, the love marriages versus the um, anarchy arranged? Oh yeah, I was actually. You was? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, do you think that maybe people need to get their egos in check more? Absolutely. So, so, Absolutely. so we can have successful relationships. Um, successful relationships. So, but how? If you were not in charge, but like, was ego a problem in, in any of your relationships? Absolutely. Uh, ego is a problem through all of my relationships, uh, actually. So my last relationship was after I got married. Uh, not after I got married. I got married and then we separated. And then I had one relationship after. And mm. ego went all the way through. So through this journey, post these relationships, I actually read this book, Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And yes, then I just most recently reread it again. And it's just like phenomenal. So of course, there's a lot of death to an ego in the book. Like they say it's straight, just like that. Um, he's okay. a lot most recently in Kendrick Lamar's latest album. So he, he's actually on the record talking. But um, 
being able to like remove yourself and know that there's this ego, like if it's like right in front of you and then like who you really are is behind it watching how the ego does things. The ego can't right. live without you, but you got to be present. So um, I would say that a lot of what you think, a lot of a lot of what people think they want, watching mm -hmm. that thing that you want and going behind it is how we're able to do that. So like in one of the relationships, uh, let's just use my marriage, for example, I did have a fear, but it was a fear of my, you know, the ego is the thing that's fearing things. Like love is not in the ego. Love is behind the ego. Right. Um, I didn't really know, like I said, you know, what marriage was about. And, you know, I, I thought that I valued this other person to some, uh, some capacity. And I do, right. I do, I firmly still value this person now at a different capacity and probably even deeper. But, um, okay. I think that the fear that I had there was all of my, all in myself. Like I really just didn't know myself well enough. And that's a fear, a fearful place where you just are always and always operating out of ego. I see it in kids now too. Like you can see like if you're just telling them what to do and they never know how to formulate the ideas for themselves, that's helping yeah. to build the ego and not really asking them to use their their own self or reflection to produce what it is they think that they are or you know what it is that they want to do. So how to love yourself, this self-love thing that we're talking about these days, oh, you know, it's not really just going to go get a mani-pedi and all of these things is, you know, thinking good thoughts about yourself, that you're not beating yourself up up in here, that you're looking at things objectively, um, afar, like away from the ego thing. And I think that, you know, these are things that you can teach along the way from a kid all the way up. So, you know, even before you get into a relationship, because you have to know yourself well enough. And this is why I think I see some children who grow up to have successful relationships and some people who are still in a childlike state and they're not successful in relationships. Um, so, Okay. So what, 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 what does death to the ego mean? Death to the ego is being able to first and foremost recognize that you are operating out of the ego and then pull yourself away and think about that thing that you did or mm -hmm. thing that you have done um, objectively so that you can grow. Uh, it's more like a growth thing. Like I was here. I no longer want to be here. It doesn't serve me anymore. I'm looking for elevation. So, you know, that has a lot to do with who you surround yourself with and um, gravitating towards a higher self, a higher being of yourself. Okay. Yeah, because I was, because I, you know, I be, I've become a science advocate, like I say on every episode. So <laughs> when I, when I look at the ego, I look at it from what a scientific perspective is. Mm -hmm. And the whole Sigmund Freud thing has sort of evolved. So the modern, I can't remember what it's called. Psychology that stemmed from that um, that theory he put he put forward it sort of changed. It's not they don't really look at that the way uh, the super ego um, and what's the other one I can't remember like that sort of like it sort of like changed. They don't really use that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had a little trouble with um, understanding you know where she was coming from because when I think ego, I'm thinking you know just like from science, but um, Edgar Tolle, and, and that's more of, of a philosophical type view. So that's cool. So Lunch, you said you had some questions, right? Um, yeah, so as far as like, hold on one second. I think I just got, hold on, because I'm bringing up my notes. I'm trying to multitask on my phone here. Okay, because yeah, Sherry did a good job because I was trying to ask about ego being the one of the issues why relationships fail. Mm -hmm. So acknowledging that as a reason, how could we improve on that ego issue going into our next relationships? Because mm -hmm. we need to definitely, you know, try to get these things right because we all understand that, you know, unless you have your own little community or own little uh, sort of religious group or 
uh, community of people that you're around, you don't really have a, a universal standard. So it's kind of like what's the default is, is these, you know, love marriages dating for love. So how do we um, improve upon dating for love, being that it's, it's not going anywhere? Um, people want to have their choices. So how do we, um, you know, deal with the ego? Like, what are some tips and things that, you know, we can do to improve that? But Sherry did a good job of answering that. To improve on the ego. Did you want me to answer it or? Yeah, you can. You can if you want to. Um, I think before you get into a relationship, I mean, okay, it's, it's cliche, but they, but it's like, a popular belief that you should be working on yourself before you get into a relationship. Right. Um, does everybody do that? No. And I think, I think that notion is kind of idealistic because, you know, people, people tend to meet people where they are and, mm -hmm. you know, love, love to a certain extent or attraction can't really be filtered through, Oh, I don't have my life together. So let me not like, let me defy this person and, and not gravitate towards them. Um, so it's kind of idealistic. I think to fix yourself before you get into a relationship. But what I will but, but say you could, is you, but you could get your ego in check, right? Can't you, can't you uh, like if you're, if you if you feel as, like as though you're possessive, and maybe that was like part of like some of the, the breakdowns in your previous relationship, maybe now you when you go into your next relationship, you don't you know you leave that at the table a little bit. <clears throat> that. Yeah, you can definitely um, self audit and think about different facets of how you presented yourself in a past failed relationship and improve upon it. But, you know, I'll throw a monkey wrench in there. Sometimes you end up with someone where the ego becomes apparent, even more apparent than, than in a past relationship, you know? Um, yeah. and, and your, your sense of, of understanding is stretched. You really have to stretch those heartstrings in your next relationship. You know, you might be dating someone in a long distance relationship or you might date someone who you might be in a relationship with someone who has to go on business overseas, you know, and then suddenly things that, you, you know, the ego that you didn't necessarily have to deal with before becomes head in supreme, you know, and, 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 and those. Right. So, um. I think it is a learning curve. I don't think that people have like the tools necessary to deal with these emotions. And so for the first, for the most part, there's a learning curve there. Like mm -hmm. there was a learning curve, even like in our relationship, there was a learning curve for me. And I touched on that before. Nice. So you have to, with time, you know, and self auditing, you can kind of, and with trust, I think you can get your ego in check. Trust in your relationship and surrendering and being vulnerable. Right. Um, but overall, I think, I think that, you know, you cannot give from an empty cup. And so the foundation of my answer to your question would be that you really do and should aspire to fill your cup and then give from your overflow in a relationship. That way, that voice or that devil on your shoulder or the ego rather doesn't become front and center and guiding your movements in 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 a relationship. Yeah, yeah like like this is this is. Yeah, that I mean that's that's you actually did a good job answering the question. That's what I was looking forward to. Um if you just join the the YouTube, the link is in the description. So if you want to join the panel, you can or you could just comment. We haven't got any cool comments just yet. 
definitely comment if you feel free. You want to, um, you don't want to join the panel, but you just want to be involved with the conversation. We will read the chats. But as far as um, Nipsey Hussle's um, wife, Lauren London, and you know his tragic death, one of the things I'm going to say about this is it seems like um, Nipsey Hussle's death is kind of similar to, I compare it to Tupac's death from example of the lessons that are being learned from Tupac. We still learn the lessons from his death, but now with Nipsey's death, it seems like now there's more lessons to be learned. Now, now his wife is coming out, you know, explaining how she's dealing with the loss. And, and I feel like she was very um, self-reflective in that interview. And I think that she dropped a lot of, um, Jews, a woman, you know, who might go through similar experiences or just women who have um, issues with, you know, the ego, so to speak. So I, I just wanted to, to throw that in there. It seems like these lessons that um, get learned after these uh, unfortunate deaths continue to happen. Posthumous well, uh, lessons. Huh? Posthumous lessons. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It, and if it's not just from them, it's the people that's around them. Um, it's 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 interesting. Um, good stuff. Right. If you, what's one of your questions? You found them? Well, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, while viewing Lauren London's interview, I honestly was able to self reflect and. I found so much commonality in what she was saying because I know what it's like to love my partner so much, right? That it's like, it's all encompassing. Your partner is, it, is it obsession? I wouldn't say it's obsession. Karan does not like when I use that word. Um, it's not, it's not obsession, but rather consumed in love with your partner that you worry about them when they walk out the door, you know what I'm saying? And you, you, there's a level of attachment. Yeah. Right. So if I can be transparent, her interview made me self audit in a way mm. um because i'm like am i too engrossed in quran this is <laughs> that's I, the part where are, I was, are you <laughs> that's the part where i was I, like thinking that that may not be so healthy although i'm only hearing it from like your overview um launch pro uh-huh. uh, that she maybe developing a fear because I don't think that anybody can help how much they love a person or nor can they measure how much they love a person. Right. But if she's saying that she needs to put death to an ego in that part where you're saying, you know, I never want to love somebody that much that may have some negative impact for the next person that she decides to get into in a relationship with, if she's starting to adjust herself for that. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, it, it's a it's a it's a slippery slope kind of because in one sense like I literally when she was explaining first of all Lauren London's position is the position that I never want to be in mm-hmm. like her right. you know it's just out the gate it's actually one of my fears like like real tangible fears and Karan knows this because I've struggled with this for years I mean I've gotten better at it but there was a time where I was like, oh, my God, like, are you OK? You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't right. want to lose you. I don't want you know, I just had like this fear that I was going to lose him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and then with reassurance, he would tell me I'm, I'm always OK, babe. I'm, I'm, I'm making it home. You know what I'm saying? And having and Man, that's a fact. Once you reaffirm that enough, you know what I'm saying? you kind of sort of, like, in my instance, I kind of fell back from that. Because you don't really hear me panicking that much, Karan, nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Over you. Yeah. So Um, my thing is, 
The guy, I thought you was done. Go ahead. So, so my thing is more or less like I am. I'm able to relate to Lauren London in the sense of where she was with Nipsey Hussle and the fact that when he passed away, it's like everything slipped through her fingers. I feel as though her identity was him, you know, Mm -hmm. like a part of a part of her identity and her reality, really like how she, how she related to herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in juxtaposition with the world was Nipsey Hussle. Right. And right. I, f- I feel like that right now, you know, in, in my relationship, like how I identify my world revolves around Quran. And is that, is that really a healthy thing <laughs> to, 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 is that really healthy? You know, I don't know because if it's not healthy or healthy. That's mm-hmm. a tricky question. Right. It really is. Well, because I, I I would like I took I took I appreciated when she was like death to the ego. Mm-hmm. How do you allow your partner to be free? Even if you're not physically putting parameters on them, how about how do you allow your partner to be free in your own mind? that you're not like lamenting or panicking or worrying over what he does when he's not in your presence. And I'm not talking about infidelity or anything. I'm just, I'm more or less speaking on the aspect of like something happening to him. Do you know what I'm saying? When he's not in your presence or whatever. Or So, so Ash, mm-hmm. I had this um, article I was reading and it talks about fear versus love right mm-hmm. and I, I have some questions it says um love-based um, re- um relationships are moment are emotions of peace comfort freedom connection openness passion respect understanding support confidence trust happiness joy etc right mm-hmm. whereas fear-based emotions are in- insecurities pain Guilt, jealousy, anger, shame, grief. So when you when you talk about how you feel about me, do you find yourself to be more on the love side, the peace, comfort, freedom, connection, openness, or do you find yourself to be more on the fear side, insecurity, pain, guilt, right? I think that understanding- Now I'm on the, on the love side. Right, sure. see- it's not a matter of if how you feel is like like wrong or something like that. Like there's a, a normal standard. I just think that there's a way to figure out the things that, oh, we got a special guest on the panel. We got Neat. Hold on. I got to change my view so we can see him. How's it going, Neat? What's good, brother? How you doing? What's going on? Not much, man. Hey, We're talking about operating out of fear or hey, love. Oh yeah, I was, I was I was listening in on YouTube. No doubt. Oh, okay. Salute, salute, man. Salute for the support. Salute to everybody else on YouTube that's checking us out. Um. Oh, salute to Jason, Jason Josh. That's my cousin. Uh, hey. Salute, man. Thanks for uh, you know, checking us out. He said he was going to hang out in the chat. That's cool. Um, you know, you can hang out in the chat and still be a part of the show. That's the beauty of the Mature Topics podcast. But um, so yeah, going back, but going back to launch, what you were saying, like. Um, it's about the it's and I, what I was gonna say before you brought us up because you like to throw us under the fire. I, <laughs> I don't know why you. It's okay. I don't. I don't mind. I I want all the smoke. I say that every week. I don't really care about that. But, but not I all the smoke. I do want all the smoke, but not all the smoke. Yeah, but Nick, there's certain smoke that's not worth it, sir. And this is, <laughs> so, I give you a number, by the way. I DM'd you my number. You never got back to me, brother. Oh, say it again, sir. I DM'd you my number. Oh, shoot. I didn't even check. My fault, bro. My fault. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. You got to get back to me so we could talk more about that. Oh, definitely, man. We're going to have some heated debates over the phone that probably shouldn't air ever. That should yeah. never air ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. Sir, like I got told you. 
only places I'm not going with uh, personal truths, some political truths, right? And what was the other one? I, I think I said something about sexuality or something like that. Yeah, I'm yeah, you said that. Those are like that. Come on, bro. We can't. But come on, the lines are being blurred, bro. We can't even tell no. politics from personal well, yes. anymore. There's no political lines. Some things you can discuss, but like Democrat or Republican, I, I don't, I don't really. I mean, personal party truth. That you know, that I'm not that. I'm talking about the lines that are being encroached upon and blurred. That's. I think right, that listen, the conversation listen. needs to be had there. Listen, you picked a great topic last week. And I, I I believe in your abilities to pick out topics. And we were talking about it. <laughs> Yo, Karan, I got the ill setups. <laughs> back to That's this a topic. <laughs> you were saying, um, Launch, you was talking about no, Sherry was saying that um she will have a hard time in future relationships. And I think she will if she doesn't, because right now. This is like some of the baggage that's still left. Like she's not over the death of this. And she said like, she's not looking for love. She said she experienced it. She don't want it no more. You know, um, she already had it. So she don't feel like she will ever need it again. She said, if it happens when she's in her fifties or sixties, then it just happens. But right now she's not looking. Who said that? Huh? Lauren London. Oh, she wow. said that woman. Yeah, she said that. So, oh, you didn't watch the video? The interview? No, no. Oh, the interview yeah, was didn't. dope. Yeah, she didn't get the check. I didn't watch the whole interview, but I, I did see um the clip. I watched it all. She was yeah. crying. She she clearly is like a woman in grief. I, I was mean, fascinated. That was fascinating. Yes, yes. Clearly. Yes. Oh, Kimmy. Salute to Kimmy. We got Kimmy hey, in the building. Kimmy. Oh, oh boy. Hi guys. What is Kimmy? Kimmy, oh, Kimmy did you see that? But Kimmy. this is how much yeah, this is how much anxiety I give you. Look at you. Yo, mad anxiety, Kimmy. Yo, my blood pressure just went up like 20 years. Like, all I said guys. was hi guys, and this man said, Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Kimmy, you, did you see the trailer? For what? Okay, I'm last about to play. episode. <laughs> check, check this out. I what? respect what? Hold on, her. What? Oh I respect God. this woman suing this man. All y'all have is what, Kunga? Audacity. Audacity! Somebody has to take the fall for the rest of y'all. Yeah, you want to sue story? somebody because for $10,000? $10,000, because you wasted my damn time. What you're very angry about. I'm not angry. These are scenes from the previous episode in the Mature Topics podcast. Subscribe and watch it now on the Quran PA YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so you get all your notifications. And like the video so more people can see the video. Yeah, so Quran is a marketing genius. That was fire, actually. This man is a marketing yo. My next product, Quran, I'm 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 shipping it over to you, brother. Take care of that. I'm glad you like it. So, yeah, that was a, so that's why you that's why uh you know Nick you feeling that way you still recovering from that show that show was crazy. traumatized man completely traumatized <laughs> I'm um, speaking out like, rehabilitation are you so angry St. John's <laughs> University Hospital you know they got my tab over there <laughs> wow yeah so so Nick you said you saw the the, clip, the interview so I have a question do yes, you sir. So being that it could be argued that ego, it could be one of the main reasons why relationships fall apart. Being that we know that we have love, you know, marriages, we date for love in this country, it's not going anywhere. Do you, what are some things we can do to keep our egos in check before we proceed to the next relationship? That's a very difficult question to answer, sir. <clears throat> One of the reasons is that because for the majority of people, they believe that their ego is them. They don't understand that the ego is something separately entirely, separate entirely from their consciousness. And they believe their ego is trying to protect them when in actuality, it's not necessarily doing that. It's trying to protect itself from discovery. Because once you understand the difference between your conscious mind and your ego, you can, you literally actually start to become freer in your thought, in 
think, and you're not influenced by other people. You're not influenced by circumstances, conditions, and situations. And when it comes to love, you you it allows you to allow that person to love that person who they are, and not try to have an idea of what they should and how they should love you. You know what I'm saying? It, I think <clears throat> I think it helps. Understanding the difference between yourself and your ego helps clarify your decisions in life, man, on all levels. <clears throat> a lot of people are pursuing careers that their ego is telling them to pursue, not necessarily something that they actually feel f- would find fulfillment. So uh, I think when it comes to love, man, it's, it's the ego could lead you down a very dark path if you're not too careful. So, so is it that based off the ego, the way you the way you describe it? Because I, you know, I look at everything from a scientific perspective. I appreciate mm-hmm. what you just said. Um, so with that knowledge, how do we navigate that, you know, going into the relationship? Is it that we have to put, because Sherry was talking about something like, and also Lauren taught you saw the interview. She was saying, you know, death to the ego. Like, what does that <laughs> mean? Is that but even I don't possible? think the thing is our ego controls us. A lot of the time our ego controls us. I mean, I understand what she means by death to the ego, but you have to take control of over your ego and check it, as they say. So you gotta check your ego, you gotta check your ego. We have to do that, but a lot of us don't. A lot of us don't even identify it's the enemy that we don't even know is there. We think our enemy is our friend. And that I've seen it put that way in other, you know, in other um literature that a lot of us don't even realize that our ego is working against us instead of for us. So it's not like necessarily you have to kill your ego, but you need to usurp its power and make okay. it work in your favor because it does play a okay. functional role. Right. I think we do at times need to kill our ego though. Like the clip I sent both of you guys earlier, that, that Kev piece, I mean, he was literally talking I gotta about- watch that. Things. Yeah, he was literally talking about killing it and like well, Kevin? Living, yeah, living above it and like higher. So like the reason why our community isn't together basically is because we let our ego get in the way. Especially he was talking to it was a conversation between men. And so he was saying that. So, you know, just like instead of our egos getting in the way, can we just come together and like, yeah, no, you know, I'm working on this and I know that you do this well. Uh, let's put it together and we'll work out the details, blah, blah, blah. And then he gave many different scenarios of application of it. So it was just really like, put the ego aside. I know that's like normally what we want to do, but moving aside from that and like, it could all work out. It could be a win, win, win situation for everybody involved if we do that. I mean, this is what I read in a book. This is the conversation that he was having. I have seen how this works where win, win, wins can be created. In that way. And now, you know, if you want to create an I win or you win or, or or situation, then that's the ego talking because you're not trying to love your neighbor in that way. Yeah, okay. I agree with that, but I don't think he I don't I mean, maybe he's, you know, for for a fact he's being that passionate or that fi- fatal about it, but I don't think it's it has a functional role in um clinical psychology if you, you know, you study that like the ego has a functional role. It's just that it's in the way because we're not even aware of it. We're not. Even, we're not. We don't know when we're talking from our ego or when we're talking from our our personal beliefs. And when you understand the separation, then you can see what is your ego talking and when it's actually you and what your true beliefs. And the people mm. who are, when the people actually go through the process to to understand the difference then they realize how much their ego has been talking for them and how much of the things that they're doing is not really what they want to be doing. It's stuff that has compiled over the years through their ego. But okay. I don't, I, how do you kill an ego? Like, how do you kill an ego? I don't think there's a... I mean, a, you can a, use your ego to turn it on and off. Like, when we go to the gym and you be like, yo, I'm the sexiest person or whatever, in your own mind, you got your headphones on, blah, 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 blah. You turn your ego on so you can get through whatever you need to get through. But that's for self. Ego is just for you. You can't use ego effectively outside of yourself. I mean, people use ego effectively outside of themselves to their own detriment to others. But what I'm saying is that... That's exactly it. What's the point of that? This the, Confidence is an ego. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a distinction there. So if you go to the gym and you're busting out reps 
you know, you're trying to better your best. Are you bettering? Are you trying to, are you looking at the next person or are you looking at yesterday you? Yourself. Are you trying to be better than you were yesterday? Or are you trying to be better than the dude in the corner that's probably been doing this for 20 years better and using you your ego like, y'all, you know, that's, that's a difference. No, I mean, like, you don't have to use it in that way. I guess that's one way to use it. But, like, if I'm here trying to focus on my health, for instance, right, and I want to, you know, get in better shape for myself, I use my ego, period. I'm not looking at anybody else. I'm just in the zone with my music. I'm telling myself, Sherry, you could be better at this. You could get your health together. And that's building my confidence also. Okay, but let's say you in the gym, right, Sherry? You busting it out. You have your goals. And then a girl, well, let's say she got the body that a I'm lot of women would envy. No, I'm just, just an example. I'm not saying you, like, you would go for that. But I'm saying she looks you up and down and then walks off. Like, she gives you a look and she walks off. That's her and her personal thoughts and her ego. Right. But what would be the most people do? They would go into their ego. But that's what I'm saying. Not, need... I'm not saying you specifically, but I'm okay. saying in general, people would go right into their ego. Like, yo, who does she think she is? Ah, ah, and all that other stuff. And that's where people I think their ego. I think this is the problem we're having uh, because, like, like it says on the screen, the term ego is, is as confusing as any in psychology. Not only is the word itself used to refer to several distinct psychological constructs and processes, but the psychological landscape is littered with the concepts that include ego in one way or another. Egotism, ego defense, egocentrism, egocentrism super ego, which I think that's what controls the ego, ego involved, and so on. But what does ego actually mean? What are we talking about when we refer to ego? And what's the difference among the terms in which ego is embedded? Um, put simply, the word ego is a Latin word for I. Literally, uh, literally translated ego means I. If you were writing I love you in Latin, you write ego uh, a multi. I'm sorry if I put you that. <laughs> right? So that's what I'm saying. When I look at what the word ego, I, I don't really look at it from a philosophical perspective i look at it from just the pure like it says it's basically you so like continue when reading I continue that, reading because this is interesting you want me to but continue there's a different... yeah because they're getting into it the the crux of yeah. I, it's I not just i it's you not said, no well he just if you look what i just read it says it has right but movement. but it gets into the crux of it in the I, next paragraph Use of the ego crept into psychology mostly through the works of Sigmund Freud. That's where it started from. In mm -hmm. Freud's theory, the ego is a part of the personality that arbitrates between animalistic desires and the ID. Of the, of the id. The id, that's what it's, it's called. I mm -hmm. can't remember. See, I mm -hmm. learned that in college. The, I the id, yeah. A long time ago. But anyway, the mo and the moral and social standards of the super super ego. I know that's what controls the ego. That's what's supposed to like keep everything intact, in right? But interesting, but interesting. Uh, interestingly, mm -hmm. the word ego does not appear anywhere in Freud's extensive writings. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. he never used it. Rather, ego was a translation of what Freud writing in German called bash. Nah, I can't do that. Uh, literally, yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, the I. In essence, Freud was referring to the conscious decision-making part of you that you regard as I. As when you say, I dislike my mother or I decided to change jobs. Or I dreamt that my house was on fire last night. That is your I, your ego. So yeah, it's just the I. It's just you. Your ego is you. Nah, it's bro, I'm it's much more later than that. It's no, way I, I, more later than that, bro. Because what happens is people call. Where is this? Term, this is YouTube. No, this is uh, psychology. Today. Google? No, this is psychology today. Yeah, you got to read a book called The Road to Suicide. I mean, the title is whatever, but it has some interesting uh, nuggets in there on the ego. Okay. You know who wrote it? I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link. Yeah, send, yeah, send me the link. Send me, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But yeah, it's so a, it's when a, you it's guys a quick are, read. It's a quick read. Yeah, no, nah, I don't mind. I mean, I, I'm an audio book guy too, but so, so all I'm saying is you and Sherry are kind of you know, talking past each other a little bit because you guys have two different definitions of what ego means. So that's why I came to show you that, like, there's a reason why you guys are having that is because ego can mean a lot of different things because people take it and add to it mm -hmm. and they make it into whatever they want to make it into. Oh, by the way, salute to Dawn. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Dawn. Um, yeah, her friend, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember her friend's name. That's what we supposed no. to put on the show, the domestic violence. 
I'm sorry, I can't remember. I think her name is Rose. She got back to me, Don. So yeah, we're gonna schedule a date with her. We're gonna do a powerful show on domestic violence. So thanks for making that connection. That's gonna be a powerful show. She has a very, very deep story. story. Yes, yes. But but hold on, Kimmy, are you there? Because we got Kimmy on. We gotta get Kimmy involved in this conversation. I'm sorry, my mic was off, but I'm listening. Okay, 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 okay. So were you familiar with um, the Lauren London interview with Angie Martinez? No? She went mute. Go technical difficulties. Technical difficulties? Yeah, possibly. Okay, we'll Me? come back to her. Kimmy, you there? Oh, she got to come back. So when she come back, we'll get her because I want to change topics. I'm gonna let you guys have more you want to add on this because we oh, got there's some tons time. Of more. There's always tons of more, especially with Sherry on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I think that's just where yeah, I try to I, I try to bridge the gap between you two that you both can be right, you know, um, because Sherry has a you know distinct view. That's why I asked her earlier, well, what did she mean by death to the ego? Because I know she wasn't talking about committing suicide. I know she was coming with a more um, philosophical view, and, and she always showed. She quoted, um, I think, what's his name, Eckhart Tolle. Um, she, that's where she, you know, she read one of his books or whatever. And Nick, you're talking about this other guy you just told me about with his book, right? Uh, something deaf. Yeah, well, it's a group of it's a group of um, therapists and clinical psychologists. They they participated and also film, but. They mentioned this book, and I looked it up, and I and I, I was going through it, and I was, it was it was very interesting. Some of the um, literature and the way they shaped and structured the ego, and how humanity projects the ego into religion to give us something to blame, and oh, how we it's it's You're interesting, it's fascinating. <laughs> now I'm just saying okay. it's fascinating, man. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it to, to you know I know I know you know stir the pot. I'm just saying. That's what they would do with how our personal egos, our struggle in community wise, you know, how that, how we project that into society and, and how we all are, are influenced by that. It's very interesting, uh, their take on it. Okay, cool. So, Kimmy, are you there? Get your mic fixed. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. So are, are you familiar with this um, Lauren London, Angie Martinez interview? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I didn't get to finish watching the whole thing, but I watched most of it. Um, I had to go back to work, but I didn't get okay. to finish watching it. But I got, I got most of it. I saw the part where she was talking about ego. If that's what you guys are discussing, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about, you know, she wanted to put death to the ego. Um, she's not looking for love. Um, and then Angie asked her. The reason why we made the title "Fear or Love" is because Angie kind of got her to like narrow in on what she meant. A little bit with the ego, we're talking about fear, and then we was talking about fear of intimacy, and then we compared a little bit. Uh, well, I didn't really get to go too much detail about um, loving, uh, what fear looks like versus what love looks like in a relationship. So, what is the ego to you? Like, what? Um, what is your? Uh, when she says deaf to the ego, what what do you get out of that? Um, I think it's just I when I feel like what she was saying was um to kind of just not dumb yourself down but just kill the um like the selfish part of ourselves the the part where we put ourselves in the center of everything and and not look from the outside looking in cuz it's kind of like you know I think she was talking about you know like when Nipsey died most people when their loved one dies at all you know, they're like, well, I feel so bad. I am so sad. Oh, how can I go on without this person? And I think what she's trying to say is that we have to kind of forget about that and understand that. Well, I think she's also she said that, the uh, you know, people are their spirits, you know, so when they die, their 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 physical is dead, but the spirit still lives. So you're still with them or whatever. But um, you once you get rid of the fact that you feel like it's just all surrounding you. And it has more to do with them. Like they have other things to do, I guess, basically in this world. You know what I mean? Like they have to, you know what I mean? It's not about j just how you feel. Um, it, it helps for you to get over things like death 
because you just you take away the selfishness if i'm explaining myself correctly like you know what i mean like i think that's what she was saying if that makes sense right mm -hmm. right right so has ego been an issue for you in any of your relationships a uh, year all the time i mean the place that she's speaking from sounds like a very very healed and a much more high vibrational place than i am with it because even currently with my children, with any relationship that I have, it's my ego is definitely heavily invested and it's a part of it. And it's definitely an I statement. A lot of times, you know, I'm learning to make it more like um, less about myself, I guess. But I think we all naturally, um, I think it's all naturally, like we always think about self first and we put our emotions too much into things sometimes. So I don't want to say that it's a problem though because i don't think it's a problem in a mm -hmm. way i just think that it's something that we have to understand okay yeah i don't know if it's a problem i feel like ego okay. only becomes a problem for real when it's too much of it because we all have ego we all have i we all are a little bit selfish and sometimes we should be but when it's like over the top then it's more like it's that's too much ego. It's narcissism. Narcissism. It's right. It's different. Copy. So you answered my next question because I was going to say. So what can you do? Like if ego was an issue, going into your next relationship, how could you suppress the ego, or um, you know, things like that? So, so how to suppress the ego? Yeah, you kind of answered it though. Like mm -hmm. you were saying, you know, keeping it in balance. Um. Um, yeah, you 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 pretty much answered the question before I got to it. Um, oh, any final words? No, nah, that's not nah, that's good. You on point. You, I mean, you shot with it. But any <laughs> any final words on this topic? Because we we definitely got another topic that's going to be. You got two more topics. Now the that. Lauren London interview. I, I'm gonna finish watching it. As a matter of fact, as soon as I get off here, okay. because I do want to finish hearing what she's saying. I do think what she's saying is dope. I feel like it takes a lot of work to get to that space that she was that she is in. Um, yeah. Or trying to be in, because I guess she said she's not there yet. Um, however, it's a difficult thing, you know, and I and I don't think anyone ever reaches there like finally. You know, I think it's always a work in progress because we're human. And in this flesh, we do fleshly things. So I feel like get, getting rid of ego for real is is super like more in the spirit. It's, it's much more spiritual. Like it's, it's something where you have to, when you're operating completely out of your spirit, man, alone, I feel like that's when you completely kill your ego for real to me. And I don't think any of us are really capable of that for real. Mm. Cause we just, we're too fleshly. So mm. I don't know. I respect it. I respect it, man. Um, good stuff. Wait, anybody else, any final words on this topic? What we'll say you, Nick? <laughs> what do we got to do? I what to suppress the, I don't think you could ever kill the ego as long as we're mortals. I don't think you can kill the right. ego. It's, a, it's an essential part from birth. <clears throat> I think okay. it's it plays a certain role. And as Kimmy said, I think if it, if you only act out of your ego, you're going to have a very challenging. Even if you gain monetary success, you're going to have a ch challenging time building relationships. Challenging time. You know, having any kind of human interaction to connect, you know, or networking even. You look at people who, you know, some of the greatest criminals in New York City, ego brought them down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, across the board, entertainment industry, actors, television, music, you, you can see it. If you're not just looking at saying, you know, oh, this is this type of personality, when you listen to them speak in interviews, you hear the ego. You can right. hear it, and with the things that they're saying and how they're addressing themselves and what and their capabilities and what they want to do, it's it's all unidimensional, one dimensional. Sorry, and it's only about them. You can see you can see you can see the first domino being flipped, but I think humility is the key. I, honestly, I think humility. You got to go in the dark places where you don't want to go and see the ugly truths about yourself and humble yourself to actually defeat ego. Well, not defeat, but to humbly uh, to suppress ego. 
You know, all of us have skeletons in the closet we don't want to face. I would think so. We're all above 30, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Right? Now, that was my yeah. second attempt to get Kimmy's age, but, you know, it didn't work out. <clears throat> oh, I'm 31. I ain't even know. <laughs> I'm 31. We're oh, definitely okay. above 30. I'm 31. Okay, yeah. So this is a mature panel. Mature yeah. panel. Yeah. What do y'all okay, think about sure. humility, though, as far as this goes? What? Like, as, Wait as a far minute. As... Huh? Well, I guess humility is rooted in love. No, I'm saying as far as when it comes to dealing with the ego, like, because it seems like it's the opposite of ego. Well, if ego means I, just say I less. <laughs> that, doesn't mean, like, that doesn't mean you're less egotistical. That just means you're, you're not using the word. You can still behave in a particular manner that would suggest your ego is in full force. So but I'm saying, like, to truly be humble. Huh? I said maybe thinking less about yourself and more about others and actually not you know? thinking I so much. Isn't that humility? I exactly. think it's all about a balance. Not really suppressing yeah. the I because the I is like an evolutionary quality, I think. We're like self-perseverance. But, but um, Ash, we're not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about philosophical. They have philosophical perspectives on ego. Babe, why do you our, always yeah. do that? You always like tell me what we're not talking about. Like, I'm no, very I'm much they, on targets. Okay. No, I'm just saying what they, you know, they don't see it from. I know where you're coming from. Just, no, no. I mean, what are you talking you're about? From, like, you're, you're coming from you're the too same presumptuous, place. sir. <laughs> Um, I guess, I guess. Okay, so so pretty much what <laughs> you be confusing me, but I think I think overall what I'm saying can 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 implement can can both integrate philosophical um, rudiments as well as just like science based rudiments, right? So what I mean by that is, again, it's about a balance for me, right? So in my opinion, it's about balance philosophically speaking i think we need the eye in order to survive and it is also intertwined into science as well i mean because at the end of the day philosophically right be that you're making a distinction all we have yeah. is the eye when we're born and the eye when we die right so yeah. <clears throat> no what is what is your perspective on that I mean, we have our parents <laughs> and we have people that we have to, you know, coexist amongst in order for them to help us. So it's never. Yeah, I yeah. But what I mean by that is like, it's in essence, in essence, it's only you who's born at a time. Like, it's just you, you know, you enter the world by yourself unless you're a twin. And even then. Yeah. And truthfully, the what Launch is saying is correct about having I when you're born, because even as a baby, there's ego when you think about it. Because the baby doesn't. Babies are concerned. pure ego. They're completely yeah, the baby, dependent. They're completely ego. They have no doing. idea about what what this person is doing or yeah, what that person is doing. The baby's concerned about himself. He's like, I'm and, hungry. Wah. Right. I'm tired. Wah. He doesn't care. Right. He's not because, that you're tired. because there's an you're evolutionary quality like to the eye. So, so <laughs> nah, is it uh -oh. that we? Is it that we're supposed to suppress that? I don't really know. I think no, I think no, no. I don't think it's suppression, Lawrence. For I think it's just it take you have to circumvent its power, its root in you, and it plays a different role. People who don't have their ego in check, it takes over, just like any right, other but balance. But that, but that's right. where balance comes in. Yeah. So I don't I'm, think. I, I mean, a humility. I think is like the opposite extreme of 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 ego. Humility I means. Think, it's a complete like expungement or rather relinquishment of the ego. It's n there's no balance in humility. It, I mean, we I could go and look I up the definition of. I know, but I think it's more so. It, it this is okay. So you have hot and cold. If you want warm, you need a little uh, some humility. And you need some mix right, of ego. You yeah. Uh -huh. you, you're not. You don't want to put out the flame. You just want to have it under control. And humility checks ego balance you understand right. what i'm saying like you yeah. need, if you have no humility you're all ego you're out of control you need some humility in your life go go to a shelter go to a soup yeah. kitchen do something yeah, for somebody else I'm, I'm a proponent of that yeah for sure yeah yeah balance for yourself sure. out man. it feels good to do something for somebody else for someone else yeah 
and not be so and not be so like consumed with with self and self interest right. because we do have to coexist like in life we do have to coexist and symbiotically to a certain extent live with each other not and form relationships with each other not symbiotic that's a little too personal symbiotic I mean, how? Sure. Uh, symbiotic you, can, you can't say that in this day and age you can upset Kimmy how is oh, that man. upsetting me <laughs> oh man <laughs> It might be another clip. Let's go. Ding, ding, ding. I gotta get some another sound. Man. Man. <laughs> nah, Nick. You... You that that is not upsetting me. I agree about the symbiotic. Okay. It's definitely that's what but, it is. <laughs> but do you understand what symbiotically entails as far as it comes to like relationships? Yes, that it's reciprocation. Yes. We are feeding each other. I'm aware. And I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Like, what? What are you? Karan, we're making Nick, progress here. Karan, we're making progress. Nick, I think Karan <laughs> wants to the show, next sir. topic because you want to fight. You want to tussle. And I, I'm gonna fight. get them. Tell me, I want rings. peace and love, yeah. man. I want peace and love, man. That's what I'm about. Humility. What's the like next topic, love. man? What's the next topic? And red before, Kool-Aid. Before we move on to the next topic, I just want to say this because um, mm-hmm. I just want to get my last little. Two cents on this. Um, oh no, he about to throw fuel on it. Look at him; he's smiling. He's no, 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 no. Fuel. because you guys have a more of a philosophical view of what ego is. So mm-hmm. I don't really, you know, that's not really my thing. But so is I'm it philosophical though? But I just told you. I showed you. It meant I. No, that's no, no. It. We're reading definitions. But what is your personal? What is your personal experience with ego, Karan? I I'm pretty sure it lines saying. up with a lot what what uh, Lawrence Pro said and what Kimmy said. Nah, you know, I, my view is scientific, so... No, your experience. I, I understand the scientific part, but I'm saying your experience when you get upset, when you get heated, when things don't go right, when somebody is encroaching on your person, the lines you've drawn on the sand, does your ego, do you step into your ego first? How do you, man, how do you balance listen, You know what I do? Out? I curse them out. Let me stop. I'm joking. <laughs> nah, you know what? Um, You know, in maturing... I do. I handle situations with a lot more patience mm-hmm. than I used to, because I, for me, I represent the. I understand what the end goal is, right? Okay. So, for example, like road rage. I don't get into road rage with people. I've had people curse me out. I've had people, uh, you know, put up the middle finger. Now, maybe fifteen years ago, I'm hopping out the car, and it's that's a fight. Fifteen but, years? Whew. Yeah, about fifteen years ago, that would be a fight. Um, yeah, I, I, damn, I, did I get my age out? You definitely <laughs> did. My fault. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, my fault to myself, ego. Anyway, so, it's okay, man. I'm almost sixty-five. I'm, I'm approaching sixty-five. You know what I'm saying? Get the, uh, okay, okay. Okay. So cards and, uh, and, uh, okay. Planet take Part A, Part B, Medicare. You know the deal. Okay. Uh, there you go, man. So no, but um, how I how I deal with thing it, things are is that I try to avoid conflict where I understand things can escalate. So like you you just said like what happens? Do I get mad or or, or things of that nature? Like I I I haven't had an argument on the street or like with someone, um, like just like a stranger in a long time. Now, me and Launch, we argue every other day. But How does that go? Who wins? Who wins? Who wins? Who wins? I'm, I'm interested. Who wins? Who wins? Karan, Nobody. say the right thing. Do the right thing, Karan. Say the right thing. Listen, What's man. the right answer? Nobody wins. When my no. blood pressure is 141 over 110, and he, you know, and he, he's there foaming at the mouth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't nobody winning <laughs> in that I, in that situation. We go, you know we just I'm, gonna I'm both a, have, have a stroke have together. Foaming <laughs> at the mouth. Anyway, but no, but seriously, <laughs> like, like, I just like, can't see it, Lawrence. He's like so cool, calm, and collected all the yeah, time. Okay. The but when it comes to me, though, hey. his emotions hey. unravel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, Lawrence? That is love, Lawrence. It that is, is it, unless you love. get it. Yeah, Has he flipped the chair too? 
No. No, nah, I never said no chair. Oh, oh, wait. I bought the chairs, man. Put Neek on. sound like he used the toxic love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I knew I knew she was coming. I knew she was coming with the knife. Have she I broken glasses on the wall? Yes. <laughs> but you but you know, um, nobody wins, man. Like mm. in, in, in so those look. situations. Well Don says it's Don Don says, Hey. She said, Hey Launch. Hey, Salute to hey, Don. Oh, my cousin as well. Salute to my cousin Jason, man. He said I have something great with this piece, man. Thanks for checking me out, cuz I appreciate it. Uh, we supposed to be coming down there, I think, next year's uh, big family reunion or something like that. So yeah, I, I'll, it's gonna be fun. I'll see you. It's gonna be lit. But salute, salute to everybody in the chat, man. We even got people trying to promote their channels in the chat. You know we blowing up. You know we blowing <laughs> up. We got people trying to promote their channels. I've never seen that before in here. So. <laughs> That's what's up. Salute, salute. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's all I can say about the ego. But I just mm -hmm. want to say a couple of things about fear and love, right? Quick, two seconds, two minutes, and we're gonna we gonna jump off, right? Um, we talked about um, uh, the love based emotions versus the fear based emotions, right? Um, so just like asking yourself those questions, like where do you see yourself in your relationship, right? Another thing too. Um, spending excessive time with your partner, right? Um, now it's one thing, yeah, we love, I love lunch. I, I, I could spend every day with her, right? But at some point we got to do what we got to do for ourselves. And if you find yourself to be where you have to be with your partner all the time, you find yourself, um, you can't let them um, disappear from your vision. Um, they must be there, Right. That's a problem. You probably you're probably operating out of fear, right? Triggered. Um, you're triggered. What's that again? You said you're triggered. <laughs> Man, you know what, I'm here pulling your leg. That's all. <laughs> see, launch. See, I, I I can't pull out the cannon on my fiance. I can't do Listen, it. That, that would be right. Hear no Why? evil. What do you no mean? Evil, speak no evil. It, see, there you go, Nick. There you go, Man. What cannon you know, would you pull brother. out on me in the first place? Oh, I'm just oh, this is another topic. This is another mature topic. Hold on. I'm just playing. There's, there's no chance. Sherry, you I got just... the popcorn, Sherry. I'm coming uh, over. Yo, you know, you I'm, know eating you it. I'm eating it. You, you know when you bluff and you ain't got no cards in your hands? <laughs> That's that <laughs> moment. You bluff real hard. Hoping that, mm. yeah, yeah, they, they throw their throw they cards in. But anyway, all right. Mm. Um, a sense of fear. Um, when you think that you're going to lose someone you love. Right. Um, it happens when you have low self-esteem, low self-worth. Uh, we believe that someone else will leave. Um, you leave you because someone's gonna woo their attention and you're not, you know, you you don't feel like you're good enough for their attention, right? So that's that's a uh a pattern or something to take note of if you're operating out of fear, fear versus love, because Lauren London, well, Angie got Lauren to admit that this is fear. So that's the only reason why we go in here, because she admitted that this was that she that she was talking about fear. And you know, when we talk about this ego, you gotta really specify what you're talking about because as you see from Neek, see from Sherry, and even Kimmy, it's kind of like they have three different views of what, of what the ego is. And that's cool though. And the last thing I want to talk about is um jealousy. Right now, jealousy is is okay. Some jealousy is okay. But when you're like over the top, like making crazy accusations, where did you go? You, it took you, normally it takes you 10 minutes to get home from CVS. And now it might've took you 15. Oh, you must've stopped and talked to someone, right? So, so fear and love, when you, when you look at the two, fear seems to be the more extreme negative side of how um, relationships um, connections can be. So I just wanted to just tap on that fear versus love. I might put this source, this is a good source in the chat. I could go on for an hour, but we don't have an hour's time. So if you if you are someone that um, suffers, you know, have a fear of intimacy issues, you know, definitely go seek a medical professional. Um, do not, you know, allow any form of disorder to continue. Um, if any of the things we talked about sounds like you, definitely get third party help. So just had to get that little disclaimer.
And now we can get into the the. So what y'all? What topic y'all want to talk about? I'm gonna I'm gonna allow y'all to choose. Y'all want to talk about the Brooklyn pastor that got robbed at the pulpit, or do you want to talk about <laughs> the IG model? Um, that has uh that. Whoa! Hold on, a Brooklyn pastor got robbed. Hey, so you don't That's know the really story? Good. This is my friend's church. This is your no. friend's church. Yes, Sherry, it's your friend's Mr. church. I had to go like and get this guy's hold hold really on. quick. Oh, what was your is friend happening, there? bro? What is, what is going on? Was your friend there in the church? No, she was on vacation at the time, but she was telling oh. me about all her friends who were there, and she said they they robbed the congregation also. They yes. robbed the whole church. I told you. Church? I told you. Damn! I wish that you could get your friend on Sherry because we need to hear no. this. She wouldn't. Wow. Though. She, she, she wouldn't because the the pastor continued to just eat himself alive on live. He just kept going. About that, we going because all right. I didn't see that. I didn't see him. <laughs> I, no, I saw a clip of him cursing out these other two. It was a lady. Yes, there's another guy who has a podcast, and he said, you know, he called him a faggot on live. I'm like, oh, Larry Reed, yeah, yeah. F bomb, no f bombs on here. That's, oh, that's sorry, me. excuse me. Did you talk? Did you launch Do your us. thing. Do your magic. Okay, after this, <laughs> not to cut that oh, one out, oh, but oh. yeah. Wait a minute. The, so they were on live and the pat they got robbed. Hey, hold on, by before food. you say that, I do not believe that anybody is the f bomb. Sorry, excuse me. I just was no, 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 it's just okay, no, no. Okay. I know you wasn't using it in a way. It's just that wasn't that, that wasn't was Sherry's perspective. That's what Larry Reed yes. was called yeah. by right, Whitehead yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, so it's a different context, Quran. Yeah, just wanted. To no, I'm just saying. Oh, that's the sense of the word, the algorithm, babe. That's yes. a YouTube. You don't want to drop oh, okay, that word. Okay, okay, got you. That's where I was going. Then I was trying to pull up the article. So hold on, uh, Sherry, what happened? The pastor got robbed on live. So the pastor yeah, was I'm doing a live that. virtual, and um, you know, he's like he's telling the whole congregation to get down because there's four guys coming into church trying to rob, you know, them. They got guns and everything. So he and his wife both together have four hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry. I don't know where a million came from. Please I don't know play where. the video, Karan. Yeah, I can. They, they. You can play the video because it's from CNN. Oh, Cite the man. source, but you can play the video. <laughs> oh, man. Trying to get me flagged out here. Play I'm the going. video, babe, because it's on CNN. See what, see, what y'all don't realize is that every week I get a thumbnail taken down. I get the but, video. But you can play the video, though, because it's on CNN. It's a news source. <laughs> All right, let me see something, man. All right, hold on. Let me see. I got it. I'm going to mute it, though. You could just, uh, you got an ad coming. You got ads. Are free you promoting ad. free promotion? Come on, you're doing good, boy. Oh, man, I can't even, you I can't even stop. Free you. promotion. Okay. Yes, they I love you. I was going to pull this out, by the way. So I could buy I'm not going to do it. We're not going to talk about that. Let's see. Did the ad stop? Oh, come on, progressive, man. I need a check. <laughs> I need a check. Mm. But um, it's going to play. Mine's trying to get us flagged today. Guess it won't be a show if you don't get flagged. You see, I'll play a little bit of this now. It's only like five seconds. Mm-hmm. Can't That's hear anything minutes. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. Why are we, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Why are we laughing? He <laughs> 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 got down real Not quick. Like- Mm. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. preaching from the mountain's house, but he found the floor real he quick. Didn't, he didn't have faith in God to save him. He got Yo, he found the floor the real quick. Hey, Don. Scoop the Don. Hi. What's Do I have to pay any more this? No, no, no. Hey. How's it going, Don? Everything's good? You got to turn Listen, your back you, know you know I'm ready for this. I'm ready oh, for yeah. this. I got you. Don, do you got the YouTube on? You, you got to turn that YouTube down. Uh, I probably do. Hold on. No, no sweat. No sweat. Okay. There we go. Sorry. There we go. We good now. We good now. I, I'm so, here for both of them, for the other girl, too, but I'm definitely here for the past. Oh, yes. Yes. We need you for the other. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, got a, yeah. we got an expert in the building. Salute to Don. So, yeah. So, the pastor, I'm, I mean, you pretty much get the gist of what happened, right, Nick? Do I have to read some of this for you? No, no, no. I'm good. I, I got it. You can you pretty much got it. You saw his face. I, I, I see now all I need to see, brother. 
Did yeah, you see the part though where the guy is sitting on the side? Yo, like a puppet like, Sherry, right? He's I'm like, nah, that's a setup. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, and here's the other Did thing. They run that part back. You said something about a puppet. No, there's a guy who's sitting off to the right, and he's just sitting yeah. there chilling. Oh yeah, no, I wonder what was up with that. He don't move at all, never. But here's the other thing, y'all. If you look at the video, right? When they, they first come in and he does the okay, 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 and he lays on the floor, the camera was on him. The camera pans away from mm -hmm. him, and all you see is his feet, right? But then the camera shifts over to him just a little bit so you can see the dude with the gun. I said, so the whole time he was getting robbed, somebody was behind the camera. Y'all moved the camera off of him while he was getting robbed and then moved it back to him just a little bit. Like... I'm like, okay, um, yeah. And listen, let me say this. Let me put this out here first. Okay. If this was if this was not a setup thing, I feel totally bad. That was wrong. That's what <laughs> <laughs> you know what no, I'm saying? Man, you gotta dig deeper. We gotta dig deeper, Tom. When you say a setup, <laughs> what exactly she think it's like the moon landing. She's I talking think, about the listen, moon landing. Gonna, let me tell you what I think, and then y'all. We all from New York, band. <laughs> listen, oh, let Don get it out. I think he set that up, and it's insurance. I think Ooh. it's an insurance thing. Ooh. I think if you pay attention to all the lives that he did afterwards, everything was pre-rehearsed until he got on that Larry Reed show and yes. showed his royal butt. To yes. who he truly was when he called that girl fat slob and all the other things he was saying. Yes. Then he came back again and was still acting all crazy. Then he comes back with this crying video. But every time <laughs> he was supposedly crying, he poofed away from the video like this. And then he comes back. <laughs> A little squirt, squirt of onion juice, a little onion yeah, juice. Right here. Like, and then today, the today this I was just watching the video. He said there's a press conference tomorrow and he wants all the clergy to be there. Yo, and they eating him up in these comments, right? That's why he said people was messaging him. He ain't never had this much hate. And so now they're saying that he took 90K from some woman. Like, yo, this dude is a hustler from back in the day, and he right. uh -oh. turned his life to God. It can happen, you know what I'm saying? He I don't think he turned his life game. to God. That's what that's the I don't think he turned his life to God. I think he's a hustler and he's still hustling as hustlers do. I wouldn't be surprised if he sold drugs in the past or currently is selling drugs now. But he's literally was selling some real estate course. Like I saw something and I just found out about it. Like I watched everything today, actually, but I was like. This man just looks like a hustler to me. Like, I don't even, mm. can't even believe that he actually has. I mean, people. yo, if you tune into his shows, he's fendied from head to toe. To toe. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I'm trying to figure out who's going to his church and actually paying tithes to That's this. That's what I'm saying, what? my friend. This is weird. Me. What do you mean, birds of a feather flock together? Man, what you that? Yo. That's all that is. So, like, so, you're going to so attract what you want. Is, Sherry, your friend, you said you go to this church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And Yo, listen, I don't know how many wow. times. Now I know how many times. And listen, I'm like, Sherry, nah, I just got to I don't want the smoke. Five. I don't want the smoke. I don't, want the smoke, I, I don't need the smoke. I don't even want the smoke. What? Yo, Karan, go to commercial. Karan, go to commercial, <laughs> man. Yo, you see the setup? Every Hello, time Kimmy's on, it'd be a setup. Do you think he'd be preaching for real, for real? Or is he like, She's Nikki cute. You know what's so like crazy? You know. I don't feel uh, I, I tuned into a couple of his um sermons and I don't feel delivered at all. Like, at I don't all. feel no connection, nothing. And his wife Kimmy, it's too late. We saw the head tie. <laughs> you know, when um <laughs> I had tuned into like one of their prayers or whatever, and it just you know, for me, like if somebody feels like they're trying to pray, I can't like and you just keep repeating the same stuff to try to string together the, the prayer. I just can't, but I don't want to drag they pray in and they like maybe they really connect this. So I'm gonna just leave that alone. But as far as what we saw on camera, I think it's that you don't gotta be politically correct with this hustling ass n word. I'm dragging facts, that phrase. Terry, dragging facts, that phrase. Terry, say how you that really man feel, is a Terry, hustler and back. he's selling dreams through preaching. And you I don't know back. who's buying it, but dumb people need help because there's no yes. way. This man could preach to you, and you sitting there. Yes, Lord. Yes, yeah. Quran, don't look. Don't ask shot, Quran. I want to say. I want to say something. I want to say to to the person named uh named D in the back chat. Flash your camera so I can see if you're a real person. Because I don't know, man. We be getting some trolls every week. 
I only never let the trolls on. That's why you never see it. But yeah. if these you can flash your camera, <laughs> I don't know. Your name is kind of weird. Yeah, you will be seen um, live, but you will be seen backstage to verify yeah, that you're a real person. Yeah, real just quick. Just flash your camera. I Nobody else asked- will see. Oh, sorry. Now, go ahead, Sherry. No, I had told her, like, you know, when I go to churches, I interview to see if I want to get, like, a new church home or whatever. And so, you know, a, one of the things that stuck out to me is that I, she's single. And so I'm like, do they have a singles ministry? She was just like, they don't have a singles ministry. I'm like, so what is the philosophy of the church for all these women who are coming to this church? Like, what y'all are like? giving up all y'all money for what? Yeah. This is but yeah. this is where I'm mad at it for real, for real. Now I go to church and I love God, like you know what I'm saying. And I, I have a pastor at my church, he's a bishop. We have one of the larger churches in Buffalo, and you know, we've had issues where people I knew you like was some... from Buffalo. I hear the y'all say Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So Buffalo I, is not either, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I get it that you know when you are a pastor, that's kind of like you know seen in the public and stuff like that. But this is why we can't get and and I understand that people can have a relationship with God and they don't have to be in church. I get that it's a spiritual thing. I totally get that, right? But this is why we can't get people who need to be in church so they can get that connection that they don't got because of people like him. Because they don't want to come and be taken advantage of. They already getting trauma wherever they're at. And so you got somebody like this dude who, you know, sitting up here looking like uh, King Tut. (laughs) I need to give you 10% of my my funds because you want to build the church. But then you on videos talking about, yo, with your Lamborghini, talking about, yo, you need to take my uh, insurance class. You you head to toe down mink, all the stuff. Your girl sitting there all mink. Like, it, it don't make no sense. And it, and, it, and it just scares people away. And there's people that may need to be saved in that area. And in that, I'm talking about where his church is at. Right. But they're going to be lost to the streets because they see. It's done. Yes. It's done, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, what else? I mean, yeah, we got those, we got those, those pastor pimps. Let's call them right. Absolutely. But what, what else in the church do you think is pushing people away from the church? The people. Let me tell you something. Christians are some of the nastiest, hateful, <laughs> backstabbing, <laughs> hypocritical, uh, dirty-mouthed, everything. They church. Listen, let me tell you something. Ch- for some years of my life when I was in, so you don't know my story, Nick, but I'm just going to real quick. When I was in my addiction, right? This was almost like, what, 12, 13 years ago. But before I stopped using, I was lost, right? And I went to a church that my sister was at. And it was one of those, uh, like, uh, Christ, Holy Christ and Pentecost. One of those, you know, you can't wear <laughs> pants and all that type of stuff. Okay. But, my sister let them know that I was in active use. And when I tell you them people dogged me, wow, treated me all types of ways, and it chased me away from the church and farther into the streets. Because I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I could just stay in the tr- streets and get treated like this. I ain't got to come in here and get treated like this by y'all. Yeah. So the people, them, that's one of the biggest things that keeps people out of the church. I'm going to just be honest with you. And yeah. then... Mm. People can't come in and just be who they are. God says, come as you are. But then the people say, you can't do this. You can't do that. Don't do this. Sit up straight. Don't wear your skirt and your hair like that. Don't be. Now, here's another controversial thing. If you same sex loving, you going to hell. If you got kids out of wedlock with half of the people. Like, it's just it's so much. Like, right, just, right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have a strong mind. It's supposed to be a place of healing, but it's like a place of condemnation. The conversation get a little spicy. We just put the disclaimer up. Oh, the sorry. views and opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I respect Your the Quran, fire. Come on, man. You're going to throw us under the bus like this, brother? Come no, on, I'm man. Sorry. You to smoke. Quran, you're about to smoke. No, no, no. Continue. I just got to put the disclaimer out, man. We I to know, but now they're going to come for, for me instead of us. You know? <laughs> Man, it's supposed listen, to be man. an us thing, Karan. You community. I, I got you. It's me and you. We can fight them. Don't worry about it. I got you. 
I'm, I'm hope, here for hold on, guys. I'm, I'm gonna play I'm devil's advocate. Smoke on that. So I hope look, you saved enough for the both of us. Let me let me play okay. devil's advocate. Okay. Oh, now he want to play devil's advocate. <laughs> he jumping hey, on with the white head. Yo, Karan, yo, I swear, yo, you're a chess master. Because I'm not a church guy, large notes. I, I only go to church for funerals. And I don't even want to go to those because funerals are sad. But I go because, you know, we love them. So we got to go show our support. But I'm not a church guy at all. I haven't been to church. Is launch a church years. person. Is launch a church person. No. I, I said 15 years, oh, so that right? Works, I said 15 years, right? Uh, where I said the last time I... If I said 15 years, I would have got out the car. It's probably been yeah, longer 15, than that. Yeah, 15. You said 15. I, it's probably been longer than that since I went to church just to go to church, like <laughs> not for a special event. It's probably been way longer than that. You know, maybe 25 years. But anyway, so um, I want to play devil's advocate. So now, look, I, I'm Pastor Whitehead. And look, man, I work hard. I like nice things in life. I deserve the nice things. You know, I'm not saying that if he, hopefully, I hope he didn't set that up. Because that's crazy. You know, but hey, guys. He set Brooklyn, it up. I mean, hey, Listen, Brooklyn, Brooklyn you cannot known. trust people with poor morals and character, man. They will go to, they will go there. Brooklyn, they will go there. I will never the difference underestimate. between having something nice and something that's just way off. Like, he could have had a Benz. He and dropped no, his I could afford it. Nah, man, you need the Rolls Royce, Kevin. You need the Rolls Royce, man. In a recession. In a recession. He's, not he's not being humble. You have to be humble, right? I'm not but telling I, you not to make your money and live it and spend it on how you want to. But you in a congregation that are all poor. They're barely making it, And the it, church right? looks terrible. Yeah, but I don't deserve these nice things. I would love to share some feedback. When I first heard about the story, I instantly, I was telling Karan about this, my spirit didn't take him. My spirit did not take him. And I said, I hope, I hope that this serves as a lesson to him and a wake up call, assuming that he really wasn't the meister behind organizing his own robbery and theft. Listen. But I, I, I honestly did not have any empathy or sympathy for this man. I said, wow, good for him. Because why <laughs> do you have a million dollars worth of jewelry in the church? Why are but you babe, doing that in front of... Though. I, Can look, I, I work hard. A conspiracy theory? A conspiracy theory. You know he was in the news earlier this summer, right? Yes, for turning in a boy, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and so now he's actually, well, he's funding... Uh, 50000 Huh? $50,000. The, about the reward? No, 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 no. He's actually backing up. He's paying for the the person who's being convicted. What's, what's that person called? The defendant. He's on that person's side and trying to fund his whole legal fees and all of these things like that. Every and I'm like... Oh, also, he it was a setup, and not a guy got caught, so yeah, now he, he got to get the guy out of trouble. <laughs> so well, obviously, well, if a guy with that type of character, the, it made the news. It made the news, and apparently, the news actually um, highlighted him as the pastor with with the with the bling bling, yes. the bling bling pastor, and so that made him a target. But, but I'm karma, but karma is real. But let me tell you something: karma hey, is, I, I, is I, I, real. That was the no way stop. the way that it happened, you know what I'm saying? Um, the sequence of events in which there is a highlight and a scope placed on him in which other people can now come out and speak against the transgressions that this pastor has 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 made. Like, for example, duping that woman, okay, of 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 spending her entire life saving. 90K. On, on, a, on a false real estate deal and then having the audacity. And I know these types. I know these types because, you know, I've, I've gotten into some um, situations when I was younger where I so, entrusted yeah, this, money this is a real, this to is a someone real else. This is a real to lawsuit? someone else. And, yeah. you know, it turned out to be um, a, a, a negative situation. However, this woman invested $90,000 for a real estate deal and he had the audacity to say to her I'm not entitled to pay you back 
your money will count as a donation to the church. Yep. Oh wow. What? Like well, yeah, father, you know what, guys? I want I'm the pulpit. My... I want the I'm... benches. I want that gold statue over there. Give me Mother Mary. Take Jesus off the top. <laughs> I'm taking I'm off the devil. <laughs> listen, there's no devil advocate no more. That's crazy. Yo. Yo. Nah, he nah, nah. You gotta stand strong, brother. You playing devil no, advocate, bro. He keep, he keep like letting people know. I mean, people already know, and like, like Blanche just said, people are feeling more comfortable now to, to start talking. Mm-hmm. But he's so stupid, and that's what I'm gonna say. My own personal opinion. He can't keep his little what you call that when somebody's head is real big. What do you call that? Ego. Uh, ego. He himself. <laughs> Off of live, steady digging his ditch deeper and deeper and deeper. Every time yes. he come on live, he's saying something crazy. And it's like, I think when he set this up again, that's what I believe. I don't think he thought it was going to get as much press as he got. Mm. So and will I he lose his, that, will he lose his, his congregation behind this? I think I eventually so. he, he don't need may, a color. <laughs> I think he may, but there's going to be some people that's going to rock with him to the end just because you know that thing mm. that we talked about last mm-hmm. time with somebody manipulate you. What you call mm-hmm. that? Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm mm-hmm. syndrome. Stock- right. Yeah. So he didn't brainwash some of them women. That's why he got a church full of women because that's something else I heard somebody say that the majority of his congregation is women. He gave them Kool Aid. Yeah. So Sherry, good. is your friend going to so go back? Some of the women <laughs> sticking, are sticking rock with him. I said, "Girl, what is going on?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm the- This is on some. What's that? Um, new Netflix special? The um, Keep Sweet." <laughs> Wow, <laughs> Yo, and the wife, you notice the wife ain't said nothing. You ain't heard yeah. a peep from the wife. She's smart. Now, if somebody She's held smart. a gun to she my baby's to head, play out. I'm gonna be all That's on crazy. the news. Please catch them. Da da da. You ain't heard nothing. And all these people that supposedly was in the church. First of all, I didn't hear no whole bunch of people screaming. If you really listen to the video, you hear about three people going, "Oh." Oh, it wasn't nobody in no. church. Yep. Wasn't nobody in wow. that church. Church was empty. Wasn't nobody in wow. that church. Wasn't nobody in that Just church. Jerry's friend. Because if they were, no, when the news got there, the news would have been interviewing a bunch of people. The only person they interviewed was him. That's yeah. it. That's all. Come on now, people. Look, they got to look. Listen, the oh, man so. didn't think the plan through. He, he did not think the plan yeah, through. He so distraught. So and he was the only crazy. one. Yeah, he, was he was the only the one that said the baby. So, yep. so he's the one that said the gun was to the baby's head because yes. that's not in the video. No, everybody's so. behind. But I mean, the church wasn't empty now because she said that her friends were still at church and that there were some of her friends got robbed also. So how many friends? Uh, she'd probably go there with like six Three. friends. I don't know. Oh but my god, that's, a lot. <laughs> that's about it. It was her that's six it. friends because I've seen other things of things happening, and it's been on video, and a, a bunch of people was in there, and you hear everybody screaming. Ain't no way in heck a bunch of people running up in the church with guns, and ain't a bunch of people screaming if the church is full. Come on now, no. and but where's the but where's the, where's the video? Like only down, one like person for the video. Just, yeah, because normally the video is focused on the pastor. It's a, no, it's it's a, but people got their cell phones. People got smartphones. Thank Nobody you. got nothing. That's yeah. another thing, Nick. That's what I nah, said. You Everybody not... come out with their phone when something is happening. I don't but, care but, but, you but... dying. You, they pull their phone out and start videotaping. Nobody. But those guys had guns. Man. Nobody went. So? The kids Yo, the when they was getting shot up. Yo, come on, Karam, man. Yo, there's shootings in Brooklyn. Everybody hey. got like thousands of angles of shootings in Brooklyn, bro. Like, come on, but now. people okay, getting so, shot. So, I so the he, church. He, he need to come better than that. Ain't nobody that stupid. And it's gonna so, be so this is not a, for it to play out. So, are you saying like so? This is not an issue with because you know we had church shootings and stuff like that. No, it's so not. this is not an issue of security. No. Or, or like, you think you know, so like this bro. needs to be an issue of security because first off, if you wear half a million dollars of jewelry, why are you not walking around with protection? Correct. <laughs> why are you a pastor by the blood wearing of half a million dollars worth of jewelry? How about that? But half Kimmy, million 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 million
it with was his like, golden mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but I, hope, I hope the dude that was being the statue over in the corner wasn't supposed to be his security because he's. <laughs> but you want to know what the dude in the corner? I want, and I'm not defending this man. I'm just saying maybe because you know sometimes when people come up with guns, you just don't move. And no, that's what my sentiment. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't that is like, my I'm sentiment, Kimmy. <laughs> This is the thumbs he was twiddling them. He was. <laughs> Shut he up. To be Shut honest, turns Jerry Cameron. I'm sorry, so he was what? He was uh, twiddling. He was he was Jerry was right now. <laughs> The gunman said, everybody get down. He ain't move. He was just sitting there like, yeah, I know they ain't talking to me, so I'm going to do Jerry said, you see his thumbs? He was twiddling them. Twiddling. Yeah, like twiddling them. them. Really this, this whole thing was just it was crazy i just i don't understand bishop I, whitehead mm. you know when you type bishop into google that's the first thing that pop up it just pops up lamore whitehead yeah he has to go to hell he's going to hell no. I know he's all, jokes aside, all jokes aside tune into any of his old sermons he's Why? a Vanessa. he talks with slick words he's smoother than silk I, mean, I, I could tell and i feel like yeah. everybody that listens to him so hold on kimmy kimmy there's huh? no, there's no vindication for him. He can't forgive and be, you know, he can't. That change. man is going to hell. I'm sending him there. Fast track. <laughs> Whoa, That's not crazy. on the Quran. I'm gonna kick him while, while, while Kimmy pushing. Hey, him I already him. gave the disclaimer, so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he gotta go to hell. Quran just watching it. <laughs> yeah, I already gave the spectator at this point. Listen, listen the mature topics podcast. So hold on, let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask you a question, right? Opinion. Y'all are not yeah. going to like this question, but I got to ask this question. Has anybody taken any thought whatsoever about how he got to the point where he's actually doing this to people? Yeah, he, he, gave was a he, he, he gave him was Kool-Aid. A, he, t- he said he was a street and in, in, in the thing when he was cussing out uh, the, the pastor and the girl. He was No, like, I, I understand, but you got to... Like, I'm, I'm also... It's messed up what he's done, what he's doing. But I'm also I don't think all his money came from preaching. Point. I think his money came from hustling and the real estate and the insurance yeah. or whatever he said he was doing. I know, and then he was but like, I'm okay, saying like his like character. To your point, the man's he's character. People that you know were out in the streets like him. So he's looking for these people to also bring. But these are church folks. Remember, like as growing up, you look at church like you might scam here, scam there, whatever. You might rob drug dealers. But when you look at the church, you kind of like even hustlers back in the day, we would leave that alone. You leave that alone. Like it's okay, a that's, new day. That's, me. Come on now. It's I understand, but what I'm saying is like what what pushes a person over the edge where that Drugs. no longer matters. You because know what I'm saying? Because back in the day, easy, used to be a curse. It's an easy target, and you can go to jail and find Jesus and come out and be a minister. But this is why I'm telling you that he's going to hell because. Whether you believe in God or not, for you to go this far to play yeah. like this, you yeah. have but to go to hell. That's what I'm saying. He got to go to hell. <laughs> Damn, he don't Jesus no him in hell. There's he no salvation he, he whatsoever. Don't whatsoever. He don't have no conscience whatsoever. I would, he don't I would like to answer that. Wrong and go ahead, that's go ahead. that. Go ahead, Karan. So to answer your question, like one of the things uh, throughout evolution that help us uh, push forward is the fact that we have a believing brain. Without it, we would we wouldn't have been here because those mm-hmm. the times during those two days was like really rough. Like people think the nature is beautiful. Let me tell you something. Nature was brutal and it is brutal. Beautiful. And and the things we had to go through. So what part of what got us to this point and why we you know why people can get duped in these cults and things like that is be not to say that that Christianity is a cult. I'm just saying, like, a person that's trying to take advantage of you, how you can fall for it, it goes back to that believing uh, mentality that we have as a survival mechanism. So, like, all right, so back, so, like, shadows, for example, like, people used to be scared of their shadow, or or uh, you might hear something in the bush, and because you hear something in the bush, you come to, you, you might, you, you tend to, like, your imagination goes off, and now you believe it's a threat. So you run away. That that me- mechanism is what um, helped us survive because it probably is somebody dangerous in that bush. So a yeah, lot the of that, fight or flight. right? The fight or flight, right? I was gonna get into that too. I had a good uh, article on fear, but anyway, never mind. So the point that I'm trying to say is that when you fast forward today, the people they dangle the carrot before the horse. So you know he and. What makes his situation more unique is that he's super flashy. 
So, so his vision is like even more impressive, more, uh, you know, uh, attractive. His vision is bigger. It's wider. It's, his vision it's, it's is bigger. grandeur, and, but it's not built on anything real. And like uh, someone said on the platform, he has a, a lot of women in his congregation. So he's using that to an advantage as well. Quran, are you saying that women are no, more susceptible? No, he's not. To no, that's, yo, that's, that's not what he said. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Kimmy, Kimmy let, let me throw some, some gasoline, Kimmy. Kimmy, let uh, me throw some gasoline. Men get caught up. Men get caught up just as much as women get caught up, brother. So, but why Maybe, are they usually more targeted? Well, this, I mean... In all honesty, mm -hmm. looking at it from a consumer psychology perspective, former publicist here, women actually are more emotionally driven as far as like, as far as religion is concerned, right? right. So like, and single women, like if we can segment it demographically and take it, and take the segment of African American women who are in major part single mothers. There are a lot of single mothers. What's what's the percentage? Come on, do you remember? It was ah, I, I gotta go find that. <laughs> Would you ask? So, so those, are, so, those like <laughs> psychographics are like the prime consumer because church is a business at the end of the day. I mean it's a nonprofit, it's a but it's it's a it's a it's business. A um, psychographically they are the ideal consumer to have they are the ideal parishioner because they're going to donate to the church you know what I'm saying they're going to pour right. money into the church that's why this man was able to swindle that woman out of $90,000 and this yep. is true too because my friend she was cheap and so like she was like oh my god this is the first time I'm giving my whole 10% of my check I'm like oh my gosh Okay, then, because women, women, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? And I'll talk about and, and it's, it's a different it's a different <sighs> complexion when you think about African-American women and Christianity or African-American women and the church and the role that the church plays and church life plays in their role in but their life. Know, I'm sorry. That's another thing, too. I feel like they don't even know what a church is supposed to do, like. Right. Taking care of the at community. all, at all, right. because I there's too many of them. There's too many of them, so you get swamped. Listen, there's more. With you know, for 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 the message to constantly be, um, salvation and liberation from from stress and liberation from hardship and leaning into higher sources or God or Jesus for deliverance, right? There's a lot of churches per capita in America, and the poverty line does not justify the consistent Reach. messaging. Reach. But lunch, right. but lunch, men men get caught all the time, man. Let me tell you something. It's called oh, a lick. A lick. <laughs> There's different yeah, licks. Yeah, but we're not talking different... about men getting caught in different licks. We're speaking specifically on this particular issue. No, but I was answering these questions. He said, are oh, women more susceptible to, you know, this type of thing? And I'm saying... In the church, yes, because women in hold a huge... In the church, because you cannot you cannot lie. Like, a lot of the well, parishioners the men, are, and women, are attracted women. To men. And in women fact... Women are attracted to men. So, so And in of fact, course, women are bringing their men to church. You would find a woman going to church and then convincing her husband or That's her boyfriend fact. to go That's to church with fact. her. Women are the honest to God, like women make up a large portion of, of a congregation. Especially if you, if you work out of churches, the church. whole system yeah, will collapse. Absolutely. It will collapse. Yeah, yeah so know, I, I, another, I agree with that. And then, you know, another thing too, another reason why women are able to be more susceptible to somebody like him you know, because he he prey on the women who have traumas, right? They already have daddy mm. issues or, you know, whatever they're they're looking for something. And they're he single. gives them yeah, right. and that too. And he gives them a little piece, that carrot, to make them think he has the answer to whatever. And truthfully, I you know, I'll give him his props on this. He's smooth. Like if you listen to the way he talks and if I ain't gonna lie, Miss Dawn, when I was Dawn, like yeah. in my twenties, in my twenties, and I was you know doing whatever back then, he probably could have talked me into something. Mm. Now Come on, Ms. Dawn. he get straight cussed out, but Ms. back Dawn. then he probably could have talked me into something. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's because if you if you in that state of mind, you susceptible to believe anything and you see all the red flags, but you so focused on that one little thing that you just pushing all those other red flags out the way. But Miss Dawn, this is this is my one little incy bency pushback is that if we had community, he wouldn't be allowed to exist. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? If we had like leadership, he would not be allowed to exist. You're right. You know what I'm saying? This is my problem when it comes to these type of conversations around religion is because religion is I ideally is something pure and something very useful. Absolutely. You know, if we just take it away from just the spiritual realm, the discipline, the commitment to community, to each other, that is very powerful. And the way it's being corrupted is because there's no there's nobody to protect it. There's no check and balance kind of system anymore. Anybody could become a you could become a pastor online. Yeah, like you could pass online. Like get a get a get a storefront, or pay the rent, and then all of a sudden you got a little congregation. You can say whatever you want. You, you can, can you can warp the Bible however you want to warp it. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. And I agree with you. I agree with you. And the thing is, there's no community. To 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 filter out the nonsense and say you know no, why? you're not going to that church. You know why? Oh, Sherry, don't do it. Sherry, don't Me. do it. Death Sherry. to the ego. Oh, okay. I thought you were going oh. somewhere. I thought you were going somewhere. That's I thought you were about to go back to the community. Uh, oh, I thought you. Was, I was down. like, don't do it. They're gonna cancel you, Sherry. Listen, and then but, uh, there's so many. And the thing is, there's so many, right? There, every like like launch was saying, like every corner you go on, there's a church. Every and so everybody's battling. If you're in Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn you know, is like the king of churches, man. They got a church next to a church next to churches. Yes. Next to church, like, church in the basement of the church, church Avenue. Hey, hey, you know? man. Don't, hey, Dave. Watch how you talk about Brooklyn, man. Watch how you talk about Brooklyn. <laughs> no, I love Brooklyn, man. I love Brooklyn. I, right, I stay right, in Brooklyn. Right. Here right. In Buffalo, it's There's the a lot of churches, thing. brother. Got churches next to, next to churches, next to churches. And they like when we just had this mass shooting, right? Yeah. It's a mass shooting. 10 people died, right? Right. Ten people injured. God bless. These pastors were battling for media. Because all the CNN... See, the that right there, that right there pastors, is... I, we, you, people was like, who are you? Battling to get time in front of the camera. Lost the whole point of these people died. Who are you? Go away. So, wow. again, That's it terrible. takes a strong person to be able to... Like, for me... I go to church because that's that worship experience that I, in my own personal self, and in, get involved in is what saved me from the life I was living, right? And I'm going to tell y'all the truth, and I'm sure somebody's going to see this, and I, Lord, help me right now for the... Don't do it, Miss Dawn. Don't do it. Don't do it. Slay. Don't do it, Miss Dawn. When I was, <laughs> when I was just the congregant, right? When I was just the congregant in my church, I was... In he- I was in heaven. Everything was angels floating around me. Couldn't have told me nothing bad. When I got into leadership, I said, Lord, help me. Why did you pull the curtain back for me? <laughs> you see something different behind the curtain. Mm. And I mean, that's everywhere. You know that every listen, and I'm going to say this again. I love my church. I love my bishop. He does good work in the community. He gives back constantly. Gives money away on a regular just random people. But again, you ask that question, what is one of the things that keep people away from the church? People. People get their heads blown up thinking they somebody. Mm. And forget mm. the mission. That this ain't about you. This is about God. This is about bringing somebody in to save them or help them in their time of need. It ain't about you. But let well, me get off of this because I'm probably power, in trouble tomorrow. <laughs> power, they say power corrupts. Uh, but absolute power absolutely corrupts. So yeah, it's, I listen. think that's part to play too. It's like not Isn't to say that everyone is that? corrupt. Huh? <laughs> is that is the power corrupts or the love of power corrupts? Or am I thinking about the love of money? Love of money, but the power corrupts. The absolute power absolutely corrupts. Not to say that everyone um, is corrupt. It's just that, like it's like like Don said, when you go behind them curtains. Oof, it's a little different. So I know I, I, this topic is just crazy. I think we all in agreement with this topic. 
Pastor, you know, yeah, yeah. I didn't expect all of this with, with this topic. This was great stuff. You um, say this every show. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But launch you back because this yeah. is the next topic is your topic. So we're gonna wrap. You going This is the final topic of the night. Oh, you know, this final topic about to be like six more topics till like probably like three I'm, o'clock in the morning. I'm telling you, which, which IG model? Huh? So, so, so oh, yeah, I'll put yeah, it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. give me a second. But go ahead, launch. So, her name is Jenna Two or Gina Two. I'm not too sure of the pronunciation of her first name, but she Gen- is an IG Gen- model. This is Gen Two. Yeah, Jenna, yeah, yeah. Jenna too. Yeah. And um she her story uh, her story hurt me. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um yeah. twenty twenty, she's twenty seven years old currently. Mm-hmm. And you know, her her story is kinda old if you consider two months to be old, but on TikTok she went public with her AIDS diagnosis Mm -hmm. and it was like a disclaimer of you know take your health seriously because I did not um and this is the result of it right so she was an IG model very beautiful girl um but you know she she indicated that she had gotten sick one day and after getting sick her body just decompensated Um, shortly thereafter and you know she lost a lot of weight throughout that process I guess the doctors were running tests on her they had to collect blood they had to collect bone marrow trying to figure out if she had cancer or some type of autoimmune disease until finally one of the doctors had said hey you know you have uh, AIDS right Um, I guess based on her lab results her t-cell count was extremely low and um you know, she was in the hospital. Next thing you know, she lost 65 pounds. She uh, experienced wasting. So, you know, she lost a lot of muscle tone, a lot of fat. Um, and she couldn't walk to the point where now she is like literally bedridden or wheelchair bound. Mm. Um, yeah, I was going to play the clip. Want to play the clip? Yeah, yeah, please do. I, mean, I think this video might get flagged, so may as well. Oh my gosh. But this is this is Jenna too, Gina too. And here she's trying to walk. I'm trying to get up. Was she an international model? She was just an IG model. She's she uh definitely gotta turn that hmm. music off. It's just sad. We don't hear it. Quran. Oh, you don't hear the audio? No, because no. it's not on Quran. It's not on. No, I did have it on, but I just shut it off. But okay, yeah, that's the that's that's yeah, they don't gotta play no more. But um, yeah, that's that's her. So so basically, um, the thing about her story is that she didn't just like come clean with her own diagnosis on TikTok, but she also dropped um a clip of her exiting a hotel with Nick Cannon. So I think that that's the reason why, and this was in 2015. So uh, a lot of people have been accusing her of clout chasing and others are like, well, maybe she's dropping a hint as to who she could have possibly contracted, you know, the disease from, or there's a lot of speculation as to why she dropped the clip of Nick Cannon and her exiting out of a New York city hotel in 2015. But ultimately I think her story stands for, um, just what happens when you're negligent with your own health. The doctor had indicated they gave her a benchmark, rough, rough benchmark of uh, 10 years that she possibly had HIV yep. um, for it to finally progress to that level for her to decompensate in that way. Yep. Uh, an eight to 10 year window. Remember and, I said that? Remember I said that? Yes, yeah. I remember that. And they don't know nor does she know how she contracted the HIV virus because right. she was not getting tested that entire time. So, so there goes another. Saying, 
We're not saying um, that Nick Cannon, you know, did, has anything to do with that. For the, you well, know. we never said that, babe. So, like, I just want to add that for the record. Just, yeah. But, but she, um, yeah, she definitely um, had that disease for <laughs> ten years or more. Um, right. And and she, I know that she she was having signs. She just was ignoring them. So ignoring she them about you know your <laughs> making sure you take care of your own health. But I said that. Remember, Launch, I said that. Like, people think it's a joke. You can yeah. live with this disease for 10, 15 years and not have nothing to bother you. And then all of a sudden, one day, you realize you sick. And then all of a sudden, you in the bed and you just lost all this weight and you look right. up and you're looking like a ghost. You know right. what I mean? It, 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 it happens like that. And so yes. if she would have been taking care of her care, she wouldn't be in the position she's in right now, but she can still Correct. live a long time as long as she take her medicine and stuff. But you know, like you said, it, it did a lot to her body. It definitely so, so did. She wasn't getting tested or nothing. Like she just wasn't going to the doctor. At she all. was not getting tested. She was not getting. She was not getting tested whatsoever. You know, um, I. I remember when I went through a phase of not going to the doctor, not being tested, but I also, I also was abstinent. So, <laughs> and I wasn't out there getting tattoos or anything. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, I, I do want to add some realism here because there are people like even young adults, teenagers who are not going to the doctor, but I think that there's a lot of advocacy that needs to happen. Like, please go and see the doctor more often. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're young and you're vibrant, you think that, well, why do I need to see the doctor? I'm fine. I'm fine. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm healthy. Um, right, you look and healthy. I, you so look you healthy and I, and you might feel you might feel like you have vitality and yep. she was slim already you know yep. and then that's yep. and and that's one of the things that she had indicated that she was slim from before growing up she was always like on the skinnier side of things so, so how, how did she when, start to receive this outpouring of support so she it honestly stuff? it was through the it was I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. Tasha yeah, K the TikTok resurrected videos, right? Tasha K resurrected this story again because the story is like two to three months old and she got outpouring for it and she was getting outpouring. But the reason why she's hitting the 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 internet right now again is because Tasha K um, did an interview that she streamed live on her own streaming platform with this girl. And it's the first interview that Jenna 2 has, has um, given, right? The official okay, interview that. that she has given. And there's a, again, like there were questions that Tasha K had for her, like, what is your link with Nick Cannon? And cause she has been in the industry. She's an IG model. She, she has been in that scope of, the, in the presence of Nick Cannon, in the presence of Chief Keith, allegedly, in the presence of Chris Brown, allegedly, right? Um, be, based on her past tweets with pictures of her being in these intimate circles. And, you know, I guess people are assuming that she was like a groupie. And then allegedly again, I mean, well, it's not allegedly because we saw we saw the video footage of her exiting out of a New York City hotel with Nick Cannon. So um, people are naturally drawing conclusions like who was this mystery woman? And at that time in 2015, people were trying to figure out who this mystery woman was. The, the tabloids labeled it as that mystery woman leaves NYC hotel with Nick Cannon. And this is in 2015. So they're, they're comparing timeframes and they're like, well, if the doctor said, that you've had this disease for eight to 10 years, 2015 was seven years ago, which means you had, you know, uh, a diagnosis to which you were unaware of. But here's the launch, uh -huh. here's the switch to that. Uh -huh. Remember I told you, you don't always in the beginning years, that first year to three, possibly four years have a viral load that's so high. You mm -hmm. can start out being what they call undetectable, meaning you mm -hmm. can't transmit it. Right. So 
if she was with him during that time period, she probably didn't transmit to him. Right, exactly. The viral load started spiking, and that's when exactly. She, and it's harder for women, too. People need to know it's harder for women to transmit the disease than it is for men because mm. the of the how it's done. The men target insert, is smaller. Yeah, yeah. Men insert. You know what I'm saying? It's going right into you. The target is smaller. Let's just yeah. Yeah. And then keep it she, clean. How do we know she didn't use a condom when she was with him, right? Well, so right. Do you know, like, some of these people, some of these people, don't, and I've come across some of these people who don't want to know. they rather yeah, not absolutely. know. Yeah, they don't exactly. want to know, and some of them who have it, they don't care. Exactly. <laughs> you, have a, you have a subculture of people. Like, when I was reading up on this and really doing some research, there's, like, a subculture of people who have the disease and they want to be super spreaders. Like they, their yep. whole thing is I get a rise out of spreading the disease. And you, know what you have, listen and lunch to counter that you have some people who they call bug chasers who want to get infected because of the benefits. What? Deep. Listen, oh. I've been living with nah. what, hold on, what is it called, Ms. Dawn? It's called bug chasers. I've been living with HIV bug for six chasers? years. Hold on, I gotta look this yeah. up. I've been wow. living with HIV for That's six crazy. years. And I have uh -huh. heard everything. I've heard what Launch just said, the people who just don't want to know or they know and they don't care and they purposely spreading it, right? Because in their mm -hmm. mind, they like somebody did it to me. Remember, I right. talked about that too. And then right. you have the people who are negative who are what you call bug chasers because they're looking for people who, and that's more so in the gay men community. I want to say that too, right. but it, it's on both sides. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it's crazy. Wow. The frailty this is, is a human mind. This is but why um, we, I, I think people are tech. confused. I think people are safe confused. Tech. They're feeling conflicted where Jenna too is concerned because they're like, why is she getting an outpouring of support? Right. Because this girl literally, you know, she's what I'm a saying? human she, being, though. At the end of the day, she's a she, human right. being. Like, like that. To that extent, yes, and, dies. And, and that's on and that's on one end, but then on the other end, it's like you literally just like she just found out her her diagnosis within the year you understand what i'm saying to you so so what were you doing for nine years you were just like out there you know what i'm saying and so i think people are just not really messing with her too much as well because it's like yeah, but, well, but you man, put though, a lot of a people, lot of people at risk. Do this, did that a lot of people out there like her they don't get tested. a lot of people are That's out there a lot of people are That's 100 percent because but, you oh, missed but, all the bullets doesn't mean that you weren't doing the same thing that led to what she's dealing with. Right. You just got right. lucky. And, and the thing is, like you said, there's so many people that is just afraid to get tested, right? So if you're just a person yeah. who maybe you do go. So here's the thing, too. You got to blame the doctors. Majority of primary care physicians, they don't offer HIV testing. Even no, they don't. Visit. You no, have they to don't. say. You have to ask. And at the end, you'll get some doctors that'll give you pushback because they don't feel like you're in the risk area. Yes, right? yes, it's true. Because even with me um, and my doctor with being pregnant, like I literally had to ask for that. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't given and, and I'm pregnant. And then when I looked at it, when I like looked into this information based on like Jenna 2's story, I realized that like doctors can actually be sued if they conduct an HIV test without your knowledge. Absolutely. You have, you have, to, so you have to ask time, for it. 85% yep. of the time I go do my blood work because I go to that every six months. Um, mm -hmm. they, they ask, we know, Karan, every single, every, ask, thing, every two weeks. <laughs> do you want to get an STD test? I say, yeah. You know, Why very not? Very rarely would I say no. And you know, I know my results are going to be some, negative. Some providers are not asking that. So uh, yeah. to be the devil, to kind of like to be her on her side thing, like I've been following her on TikTok. I mean, at the end of the day, what happened to her, like Nick said, could have happened to anybody, right? Because uh -huh. especially in the black community, if we want to be real, 
We don't mm-hmm. go to the doctors the way that we do because not uh-huh. just the that we could be living in our body. We have high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, <clears throat> um, cancer. Yeah. You know, my father, he refused to go to the doctors. And when he realized he was sick, he had cancer that spread from his lungs to his brain in six months and killed him. Oh, oh my God. Right. So uh, we uh, as a community, we don't go to the doctor. So yeah. she just her her illness ended up being HIV, which turned into AIDS. That's but crazy. the majority of people do not go to the doctor. So you can't really like try to get mad at her, like, oh my gosh, she exactly. was just out here for the nine yeah. years. She didn't know. She's yeah. I mean, no. you know, she so thought Miss Dawn is a bigger <laughs> problem. It's not just about not going to the doctor, it's about why do not why do we not value ourselves enough to do this? In, in groups, it's not, forget the, the doctor is the end result. The doctor is the end result because if we valued ourselves, that would be a no brainer. Some all I think, but I believe all of us on the panel that's a no brainer for, but a lot of people out there, oh, I'll wait. They know something's wrong, they feel something's going on, yeah. but they're not. Nah, yeah, I'm good, I'm gonna take it. This I'm gonna take an aspirin, I'm gonna go sleep it up. And by the time they finally do go, either it's an ambulance taking them there. <laughs> but when they do go, you know, it's it's too late. Yeah. You know, they're talking about hospice at that point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, I think there's a bigger there's a bigger sickness and it's a mental one. It's not a it's not a physical one. Because everything in the mind manifests it, manifests itself physically. And we don't we don't value ourselves enough to take care of ourselves. I, okay. I, I work at I work at a big I work at a big company. And yeah, just say it like diabetes that. We don't business out there. Right. Diabetes is rampant. High blood mm-hmm. pressure is rampant. All these mm-hmm. things rampant. And it's not like people don't got money. It's not like the benefits ain't there. The benefits are there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's still it's it's a mental thing. It's it's not it's not access. It's mental. Huh. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, because and you know, to relate it to her, again, she had indicated that she was raped a few times too. Yeah. As, well, you as know that that's self worth the stripped when those things happen, man. Exactly. Go ahead, Sherry. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think the Dawn said a point about getting pushback from the doctors too, because I think the only time that I've ever received pushback was when I was married, and that's when the doctors just imposed their own opinions because she was like, "Aren't you married?" I'm like, "Okay, you still gonna give me this?" So? Test, though? Absolutely. <laughs> so? Absolutely. What? Like, no. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the problem because they try to push their own opinions on you. When at the end of the day, if you would have listened to them, right, and say, for instance, something was wrong, now that's their fault because they had an opportunity to help you, and they chose. You know, they was trying to choose not to. So, you know, it, like Nick said, like it's a mind thing. It's it's just it's a community. It is a mind thing. thing. Mm-hmm. It's a community thing. We as a community. Ah, Miss Dawn, you about, said it. You, you know, we don't it. talk. And and this is why I do what I'm doing, right? With the campaign, the HIV stops with me talking on, on on platforms like this on my Facebook page when I go into churches and stuff because there's not enough of us out here talking about it, and that's the problem. Nobody wants to talk about it, and as long as we're not talking about it, then guess what? It's not a problem, and it don't apply to me, and I'm gonna let it fly, and I feel fine, so ain't no use in me going, and I'm this macho man. What you talking about? Why I gotta go to the doctor? Right. Wrong with Wait, Miss Dawn, you yes. were saying that you can be infected with HIV but not know for the first one to three, four years? For 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, it lays like dormant. You know, okay, so here's the thing. No, it's not even that it's dormant, uh, Nick. Nah, just... When you first get infected with HIV, right? It has it's attacking your 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 blood cells. So depending on what your your health status was at that time, right? So if you were a very healthy, vibrant person, you know, who eats good, who goes and exercises and all that good jazz, and you get infected with HIV, nine times out of 10, if you're not getting tested and you are in, in decent health, you may not find out right. until six to 10 years. It takes yep. that long for it to take over your body that much and your body no yep. longer can fight it. To where now your viral load goes so high, it starts just like deteriorating parts of your body, and then you'll get sick like she did, or you'll catch pneumonia or PCP or something like that. I want I want to add to that. 
Because that's what viruses do. It takes a test. So even with the coronavirus, and I don't want to talk much about that because they flagging channels for talking about corona. <laughs> the, it takes time for it to assemble in, in your body. So HIV is a different virus from corona. But like corona, it takes about 48 hours. It could take 40 hours to five days for it to, um, maybe even longer in some cases, for it to, um, like she says, to replicating your system, your viral load, load increases, starts doing damage to your body. And then now you, next to you know, you're sick. You might have to go to, you know, be on a respirator if your immune system has a hard time of fighting it off, right? So, you know, it's very important for us and to people listening, that's why we have these conversations. Go to your doctor. Listen, I'm about to ruffle some feathers. All of this alkaline diet, no disease could live in the alkaline. Listen, that's a load of nonsense. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, sir, do I'm not ignore to, biochemistry, you know, sir. I'm going to have to call you on the biochemistry of that, sir. Listen, sir, if you want to have another debate on that, you're going to lose Oh, we can debate. I'm not saying in this situation, I'm not advocating that that uh technique in this situation i'm just saying no i'm just saying like you know it's, hey if you want to drink alkaline water be my guest it's a waste of money that's not gonna anyway, do it <laughs> what i'm saying is to the people that think that just by having a healthy diet that's going to stop you from getting a virus that will attack your cells and possibly can kill you you need to throw that out the window yeah you can i'm not saying if you want to do the 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 alternative diets, do it. I whatever. You know, knock your rocks off, knock your block off. But go to the do not substitute going to the doctor. There's no herb. There's no nothing that you can take that's gonna stop these viruses. <laughs> no but you know Once what? Really, it, it makes me think about when I go back to thinking that it's a community issue. We have to start teaching our children when they're growing up that it's important to go to the doctors because right. truthfully, I can't tell you when I ever saw my mother or father ever go to the doctors ever. Mm -hmm. I don't Don, but like you said, it's a community them. effort. It's a younger, community. I don't remember them talking about going to the doctors. I don't remember. So if you're not teaching me that, then that makes me think that that's not important. Right. And, and if you don't see, like, you, you don't see what I'm saying. So when you say community, it starts from a, 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 a from home. If but we I don't have one, Miss Dawn. Miss Dawn, we don't have one. Our our community is decimated. No, that's why that's we're saying. falling this, victim this, to this to all why, these things. Yeah, this is why people can go ten years without knowing their age, and even now, people will listen to this podcast and still say, "This don't apply to me." Of I'm course fine. not. But not only that, but what about what about people like, you know, our communities falling apart? Our communities don't even belong to us. What about um, getting business loans and things of that nature? All these things you need to build a community, mm -hmm. access to resources, shipping. I mean, you know, schools, our own schools where we could teach our own history, for example. Like mm -hmm. we don't have anything. Nope, we don't. And the, even though the information is floating out there, they're not disciplined nor interested enough to go seek said information mm -hmm. to educate themselves. So what I'm saying is that all of this can be solved if you be introduce the structure of community, the structure of family, and the structure of community. About um, that Kevin that I sent you. Girl. Say it again. That, that Kevin piece that I sent to both of you, Ron and Nick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, a dope. A but that's the same thing. That's what he was talking about, man. But you know Kevin, very passionate guy right there. Yeah. Because it's good, though. It's good because, I mean, he's not the only one doing it. But, like, it, I don't know if we're going to survive, Ms. Dawn. To be honest with you, Ms. Dawn, I don't know if we're going to survive because the rest of the world is moving on at a very accelerated pace compared to our community or whatever is left of our See, community. This, here's the funny thing, Nick. So I am in Montreal, Canada right now. I mm -hmm. am at the World AIDS Conference. This is the biggest um, HIV and AIDS conference in the world. There's people from all over the world here. And I was having a conversation with a guy from Kenya. And it's funny that you said that, like, we don't have our own, we don't have anything, you know, we have to get, people are moving on. And that's sort of kind of what he was saying, like, you know, you guys like don't even like each other. <laughs> it was like, I was like, yeah, we don't have any 
like love for each other as people. There's it's no like, love between. Okay, I'm gonna get fired for this because Karan gonna jump on me. But even the relationships between black men and black women is skewed, right? Completely skewed. Independence reigns supreme in our community. How do you? How do you? How do you fight anything? How do you fight anything as a bunch of individuals? No unity, no no togetherness, no family. No, how do you fight what's coming? These you talking about other people who have generations of community and culture and working togetherness and synergy, and we have independence. It's never too late. Oh, there is a point where it's too late. Well, I mean, it's not late right now. How do you know? Like, there's no way to really tell, to really quantify. Look at the look at look at the market. It. Right now, they got one, two, three, four, so we six people on the panel, right? Mm -hmm. I've had, I, I've mentioned this before, six people at work, rather 10 people at Everybody pulled $10,000 together. Let's do something, right? Two people might follow through. But the project needs all 10 people. But okay. nah, you know, I ain't got, like, come on. But like, we can't even get together on the, the simple things. I mean, the, th the funny thing about that, too, I think that there's not enough mastery in communication when it comes to stuff like that. Like, how is Who's this teaching? What? But that's the thing. You need to have right. To so there's them. nobody teaching. That's why I said it's a wrap. You got to get the right people in. We're not. We're not going to. Where are they? They're everywhere. If so, they were everywhere, well, we wouldn't have a question. problem. Do y'all think? Do y'all think that we should remember? Uh, oh gosh, I need to know my history better. What was the town that they burnt down that was the Tulsa. all black? Greenwood. Tulsa. And then there was another one in the last like 10, 15 years that they started up another town that was all black. Well, Black Wall Street, you talking about? No, it was something else. It was like this town. Is... But anyway, what I'm asking is do you think that's what we need to do? Or do we just need to do better in our own communities? Are you Let's saying on. To, to the side? No, I'm asking. I'll put it this way. No, no, seriously, I'll put it this way. We're in radical situation, right? And everybody knows if, you, if you're trying to change something, you need a radical solution to a radical problem. The mm -hmm. problem is the radical solution, nobody's going to go for. There is a solution, but it's too radical that would be accepted by the current mind state of people in our community. Mm. Well, what do you suggest that would be? Pulling... Yeah, pull like, like what, what you, what you said, what Launch Pro said, what Kimmy said. Put everybody's ego to a side. Pool our resources. Start building families, not based on feelings and emotions and things like that, but all based on necessity. Stop going for what you like and start doing what needs to be done to fix it. Not for you. Not for me, but for the next generation. So they might get a chance to do what they like and what they love to do. Because for us, if we keep this up, we're, all we're doing is teaching them to do the same thing we did. And they're going to be in the same mess as the world continues to go further and further away from their grasp. But, but Nick, you do realize that's a utopia, right? That, I'm not talking utopia. It's not going to be perfect, Karan. It's not going to be perfect. I, there's, you cannot attain a utopia in this environment. No, I'm Nobody, no just... other cultures... Huh? No, what you're describing is a utopia because it goes back to the reason why these other communities you're talking about do is because they have community. Like we talked about the Jewish community. We right. talked about, uh, I can't Muslim. remember another examples. Asian yeah, community, community, Spanish community. So because they have those things bringing them together, it's a lot easier for them to pool money. Like we don't have an organization that represents all black people. You might have black organizations. But there's there's no organization that represents the entire us. See what I'm saying? And the but reason Karan, why you described, back, you've also said in previous story. shows that you've had to let yeah. people go because they weren't moving a certain type of way that was conducive to your growth. That is what I'm targeting. You, we need people who are able to move in a certain way. That's why I come on your podcast, bro. Because you guys talk about the things that need to be talked about and screw the smoke. Screw the smoke. You always with the smoke, Karan. So you know what I'm talking yeah, I do about. Want this right? smoke. You launch pro, want even though me and Kimmy got a back and forth, Kimmy, Kimmy is speaking facts when she addressed certain things, especially along these lines. And oh, so she came off mute too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just quietly listening. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, but but I'm saying we 
us us right here is a start. But we talk about the issues, but we need to actually do. You understand know what I'm saying? Like if we're gonna if we're if we're discussing these things, we need to actually do because to show other people like yo, this is the way we have to gear our efforts and our resources towards a solution. And I mean, it's not to say that people aren't in our community aren't doing things, but it's not, it's, it's all individuals doing their own individual thing. Mm -hmm. Where's yeah. the sense of community? Where's Absolutely. the community? Yo, let me send my kids to Ohio because so-and-so mm -hmm. has a, a school, da da da, and you can dorm them and this, that. Where can you send your kids that you trust the people would do right by you? Nobody. And nobody trusts anybody in our community. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's what, so, that, that's, that's what I said. Like, let's do something. The black, the black community, you know, to do something under that umbrella, like we spoke about before, I think that's kind of, but the smaller groups, like the Mature Topics podcast, we have a Facebook group. That's a community. It's going to have to be done in small groups. I can't. Um, you're gonna run. It's it's too far gone, bro. No, but no, but you got to deal with your group and you grow your group. And it, as long as you you can develop a group that has power, that's a story. That's, that's 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 I'm that's saying that's in reference to Miss Dawn's question. Them all. Oh, no, I'm okay. saying you can't. We're not trying to save them all. It's impossible. I'm saying in reference to Miss Dawn's question, what is the solution? The solution is not going to be nice to the people who have their independence. They, you'd have to give up independence and work as a unit. And people don't want to do that. I want to be better than you. So I can tell you how much, because I'm going to get the dopamine hit from being better than you. That's our community. And that's I need community. to be in charge. I got to be the one in charge. I can't that's let you be community. in charge. I got to be in charge. Right. So that's the, so I had a theory um, uh, some years ago yeah. about. Oh, we going on three hours. We going on three hours. I'm sorry. We winding down. We in the wind down. But look, I apologize. I apologize. Go ahead. So, no, nah, no, nah, you good. You good. You good. So <laughs> one of the things I used to say, and I'm trying to remember, because I, I really, I was going to write an article or something on this, or just write it down. I, I was saying that, see, because we don't trust, like you said, we don't have no one in Ohio outside of our family who if we have somebody in Ohio. All we really have right now is family, the little family we may have, right? The the little family that we we trust. Like, if I had, if I was the CEO at American Express, and I got nieces and nephews that are going to school for finance, best believe I'm getting them a job at American Express. So what I'm saying is, and even like I always tell you, like, you know, trying to bring males and females together to have successful relationships, you know, give suggestions and tips to try to improve male-female relations. That's what we do each Four week. to six yeah. months, right? Four to six months. Four to six. Oh, yeah, definitely on this topic, four to six months. It, it comes <laughs> out every week. I, but definitely on this topic. But no, like I'm saying, like, one, the one thing you know you're going to take care of is your kids and whatever family is around you. What we need to do is we need to create more two family homes and put an emphasis on education. You mean like two parent family? Homes, two parent family homes oh. and put an oh. emphasis on, on putting our kids in, in career paths involving STEM, technology, et cetera. Yeah, the NBA is cool and I joke with Launchpad all the time. Yeah, my son's going to be all American. I love basketball, I play twice a week. That's my thing. But at the same oh, where time, where we're at, where we at, at, where we at, at. Well, I got a park up there by me um, in Yonkers, and then I go, I play in Brooklyn too at this park, uh, Marine Park. I'm at to come see you, bro. I'm at to come see you, bro. I'm at to come see about that, that all American oh, status player? right there, real quick. I'm, I'm just have to come see about it, sir. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, I always say. joke and say, yeah, my son gonna be all American, <laughs> but like realistically, why don't I say, yeah, my son's gonna be the next? You know, Bill Gates or my son's going to be. I don't next. know why you don't. You need to. Right, right, right. I mean, I do too, but I'm just, you know, I'm just adding sauce for the example. <laughs> um, so, so my thing is we need to push our kids into education. We need to get life insurance policies. 
I'm talking so about there's small things you can do right oh my now. God, you hit that on the head. The life insurance policy. Yeah. The life insurance Ooh, policy. Ever, no one has life insurance policies. Why? They're so Yo. if you listen. I got it. Hey, I am playing. John, listen, I got there are things that we can do right now. All it is get together and listen. Okay, if we do, that's fantastic. But yo, real the, the honest truth is everybody cares about their family. So if we take care of the home, have the, the, the I, I feel you, man. I feel you. No, but no, you're, I'm, let me, I'm, I'm it out. dealing with the public me, directly, bro. Like I you know, don't understand how bad I'm it is you, when you're looking at the the void. I'm outside, brother. I'm outside. I know how bad it. But what I'm saying is, we have to point the babies in the right direction, because there's a lot of opportunity in the programs so that I, said, I mean, in the career paths that I said. I'm pushing science on my kids. Period. Case closed. Not to say that they got to be a scientist, but I, they gonna see that they daddy and they mommy too. We are science advocates. Hold on, hold on. So, okay, so you're gonna push your kids to the be, science. Huh? You said you're gonna push your kids to the sciences, right? That's mm -hmm. a fact. So That's that means you're gonna to. That, right, but you're gonna provide insulation for your children against the nonsense, correct? That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Right. So what about the people who can't provide some insulation that you're gonna provide your kids? But they but they can though. See, listen. They're living in it. That's I'm, what I'm telling I'm you. They're saying, living in the, in the thing that Nick, you would insulate your child from. I know we live in New York, and New York is a better off city than a lot of other cities. Like, there's a mm -hmm. lot of resources in New York. Like, I mean, there's a lot of resources in New York. That right. Some other states and cities, it's crazy. It's like living in a, a, a developing nation, right? Right. But at the same time, education, if you... If you can take advantage of the resources in front of you, see, but the thing is, people don't even understand STEM and they don't look at the top 50 careers. I agree. Like I agree with you. So, so, so what we need to do is get more individual. I know that I, this is counter to what you that is processing. Killing is. us, bro. It's individuality. No, it's not. Is killing us. It's not. Listen, let me explain why I say that. If we get more two-parent households, mm -hmm. already we're going to be doing better because we already know the stats on the yes. single-parent households versus the two-parent. We already know I'm, I'm what with the numbers stay on. You got me. We don't, uh, you we got don't got to go back here. on that. We don't but have to tell you, that. If you're talking about pooling money, right, and, and, and creating this one community for us all, what sounds like the more realistic thing to do? It sounds more realistic for us to get, you know, take thank care of our kids. Don, even if it's thank a you so much for participating. Oh, thank you, Don. Oh, you got a chime off? Salute yeah, to you, Don. Yeah. I appreciate Salute you. Yeah, that would be early in the morning for conference, but this was a great no problem. Yes. Thank you for being yeah. with us tonight. Nice to meet Don. you, Ms. Don. God bless. Nice to meet you, too. See you next time, guys. Hopefully. See you. All right. Bye. Bye. God bless. Carole, yeah, what so, I'm saying is that you're what? right. I understand the two parent family. I'm with you. What I'm saying is that you're talking about individual individualism, right? Raising your child, cool, yeah. right? You gotta raise your but kids. But the up, thing man. is, your child has to go into that same school with somebody who's not raising their child correctly. My, the problem in our community is that we can't even tell somebody across the aisle that they're doing something wrong to their child that might affect your child. But you got a parent, bro. Listen, I, I'm from Brooklyn, bro. I'm from an old And you Brooklyn know town. that you can't tell nobody oh. else nothing about their child if you're from oh, Brooklyn. You will get cussed. Uh -huh. But no, but I, I grew up in the ghetto. But guess what? Mm -hmm. I came from a two-parent household. They right. had to parent. So what you got to do today is you got to parent today. You got to really... Bro, how many really two-parent households were in Brooklyn? How many two-parent households I'm not Brooklyn? saying there was a lot. No, of course. I, I know I'm a... Listen, man. I know I'm a part of the minority. I told You're you an I'm anomaly, bro. You were, they like, you I got your... That long line of married what? people. Everybody's married. All my <laughs> grandparents, my great-grandparents, the great-great... You could go back to the ships, bro. Everybody was married. 
for the rest of their lives. They, there was no divorce. Like they all stayed right, together right. the whole time. So maybe, Heard maybe I'm, I'm I'm biased. But all I'm saying is this: even whether it's a single parent household or a two parent household, if you put your energy in your kids, hopefully they grow up and don't become knuckleheads because nothing is hundred percent, and they can do better. And that's what's happening. Yeah. Okay, but okay, okay, I see what you're saying, but this is where this this is where my issue is. What you're saying is that I agree with that. You can raise successful kids to be individuals and navigate the ter- the the treacherous landscape of the hood of life, right? But individualism is not going to pool a community together. We need to deal with the root, the family, the the parents. And and right. and if we can lend each other information on how to properly parent, because there might be information you know that can help somebody across the aisle. That might person might have some tips for you, but our ego won't let us hear. Oh God, he bringing something it okay. that somebody else says to us immediately. Oh, mind your effing business, da, da, Don't tell me how to do this or my. I've dude, I've tried myself. I I've seen it. And then you, they, 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 the anger is, re- is, is, is released onto the child. The child has just got here. It's a brand new baby. It's a brand new kid. They, they, everything is new. Colors are brighter. Sounds are louder. They're trying to figure it out. Their parent is ill-equipped. It's, it's chaos. I have tried. And this the problem myself. is we can't talk to each other to tell it, hey, you need to straighten this out. You know what successful people do when they get successful in the hood? They leave. They take all the valuable information that they, they've got and they get out of Brother, it. We gotta Never get to return again. We got huh? to, bro. We got to. We're going to stay I with understand. our nice TVs and cars. Right. But then what <laughs> happens to the people who leave? <laughs> what happens to the people behind? I'm not saying they shouldn't leave, but I'm they saying... They could Whitehead Church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you want me to go with you on Sunday? And guess what, brother? Lawrence, bro, I know you feel me, Lawrence. Lawrence, you with me, Lawrence? I, I know you I, feel me. Lawrence. Okay, so I remember, like, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, Karan, that we were having like a similar conversation, and I was telling you that I don't really prescribe to an individualistic, an entirely individualistic perspective, because I do like understand. I, huh? I mean, like a solution to the issue. I understand. I understand that Quran has, um, like, we differ in some respect. Where I believe that you should be helping other people, right? Um, once you get to a certain level in life where you're Mm self-sufficient you're now you are now in a place to pour from the overflow of your cup and you should be sending the elevator back down right um to uplift other people now you know i agree with that though right so i'm just trying to say well i didn't get that that. i I didn't get that from you just have two different initiatives i want to work with the i want to work with the babies you want to work so, with so basic because I understand that the adults are the ones that are raising the babies. So if the exactly. adults are not taking care of, exactly. then the babies exactly. suffer. So exactly. with that being they said, if you don't empower, do if you don't empower the adults, like for example, there's no you way understand that you can the say, babies I'm talking about. I'm talking about the 16, 17, 18 year olds getting ready to go to that next level. That's the that's the important group of people. And those are still run. dependents according to tax returns. Those are still dependents. So what I am no, saying but, is but when you're 18, you out on your own. Like I taught the when I go Well, when you're 16 and 17, you're not. But hold up, let me just finish when my, I go my play thought basketball process. And I see these young boys out there, I always try to mm-hmm. pick their brain, talk to them, see where they at. But Karan, you can time. only talk to them for the duration of the game. They gotta go home. They, they gotta, gotta go, go home. So, home. so that's why. So, for me personally, right? Because I understand. I listen. I understand exactly where my fiance is coming from because, to a certain extent, man, it's not. It's not really the belief system that we can't save everybody. Because I don't really believe in that. You can. I, well, it's I don't think. I don't think that no, that's really. Yeah. That's not what yeah. we're discussing. But what it is, is 
it's not about saving everyone, but what it is about is providing the elevator. You know what I'm saying? To everyone and those who decide to get on, get on. Like we're in a situation where the elevator ain't even arriving on the floor for these people. Uh, what elevator? You know what and that's Mars, the what elevator? What elevator? They ain't no way. Oppor- we haven't even built the elevator yet. Opportunity. Well, I mean, we do have successful people. You know what I'm saying? They took the, sta- they took the stairs. They took the stairs. <sighs> ain't no elevator we all call get on. So, so not to be too caught up into semantics. How do we agree when we disagree, sir? Like, how do we agree when we disagree? It's crazy. <laughs> Launch is trying to explain that to both our knuckleheads, man. He's it's, more, it's, more, straight. it's more or less. When I say setting the elevator back down, I mean just essentially like once you get put on, open doors for others. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. so basically, um, the thing is, is that what be because of the fact that we are individualistic in 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 the way that we think we don't really have there is no community right there is no yeah. group think as far right. as economics is concerned we have group think when it comes to crime <laughs> right we have group think when it comes to drug use but we don't have group think when it comes to economics Right. So my thing is, if we're if if and 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 as a result of that, there's an individualistic quality to to, I guess like okay, if, we're not gonna say our community, but rather people who look like us, for the most part. <laughs> but that's part <laughs> for, of the problem. For the for the there's most no part, standard. for the most it's, part, oh, you look black. So for the down. most part, like, well, I'm gonna say African American. So forget like you what you look like. I'm gonna say people of African-American descent in America. So with that being said, it's more or less um, the ideology of not really thinking about what comes next. You know what I'm saying? Um, Not really thinking about your children's future, not really planning for your children's future. So there has to be a certain mindset shift that is endemically not present currently within African American population mindset because we only think about ourselves. We do not think about what happens after we die. You understand? So that's the reason why, like life insurance, concepts of life insurance is null and void. Concepts where your where your parents are teaching you about credit, they can have great credit, but you won't have that, and you got to find out on your own. You got to put yourself I don't on. see how anybody pays for their, how, how anybody kids have to get loans to go to college. Like you got to you got to you got to basically put yourself on when it comes to credit, yo. Yeah, these and kids your parents, and, your, and your parents money. your parents could literally ha- be in the 700 800 club and you yeah, hear with 500 story. 600 you know what i'm saying but like, why, is why is that it's everybody every generation in black america has to reset everybody nobody mm-hmm. nobody laid a, a foundation high enough where i just need to take another step and lay another foundation and my kids take another well, Nick, step they gotta cut it's it's about but, but hold up. It's, it's about it's about evolution though and evolution rome is never built in a day and evolution happens in stages but so I my thing that. is so my thing is, right, it goes back to what Quran indicated, which is micro communities. Yes. If you have a micro community like Mature Topics Podcast, okay, you can right. mobilize. We I, can mobi- we can mobilize launch. in this in this community. We can launch. actually we can I actually agree. bring on credit professionals, you know, credit experts to talk about right. certain but, things. We could we could bring up you mm-hmm. wouldn't be the only person doing that launch. You like there's already but, but, shows but you, and pro- but you gotta have a more optimistic mindset to realize no, that I'm not, these things I'm are not actually trying to be pessimistic. That these, that to... these things hold up. These things are actually having an impact. They are because when you look at when you look at the home like home ownership right now amongst our people as compared to previous years, we're now bouncing back slowly but surely, but we are bouncing back. Yeah, you but know what through I'm saying? What? Through debt. We're bouncing back through debt, right? We're we're owning homes through debt, while others are owning homes free and clear. 
Well, you know, you I gotta I gotta I gotta uh, give it to you, Nick. Like we are at a disadvantage because of our slave I'm history. Aware. That's what I'm aware. That's why I'm trying to be and I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm saying that yeah, micro communities could have worked at a certain point. We're in a radical place. The 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 currency is flipping. So what the way saying- people money is making is, is is flipping. Jobs are flipping. Jobs are disappearing, and we're not even we don't even have the skill sets to keep up with other communities. We're automatically trending toward the poverty because all job a lot of jobs have become automated. Companies are buying software in the millions of dollars to replace thousands of jobs. Because all you need is an update rather than medical, physical, all these other dental plans, which you give. Nah, but you're gonna always need humans, Nick. So you what are, but is, we're not in the pool the job, of humans that they're gonna choose from that they need. That's what that's I'm why saying. you gotta put the babies in the stem. Oh, you gotta put that's the babies. That's what I'm trying to drop. No, 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 no. But come on, real, real quick. I, I think just now, like that's the first time I actually heard that kind of clear. I register what Nick is trying to say, and I get it. Like. There's nothing wrong with the information that's being said on a lot of these podcasts or topics, but what, like, like I said in that conversation that I sent to you guys earlier, um, and the conversation that we're having right now, there is something majorly radical that does need to happen yes. as far as the ego falling out and people just, you know, coming together and drawing a major focus to like what's going on, where we're going. The that automatic thing that he was just talking about, we're on autopilot to the low poverty line, yeah, it, that has yeah. to be the four set, the the floor and foundation of conversation. Yes, the, we're, we're if you look, and I'm not saying that what launch pro launch pro made a very good point. We are becoming that, but we're trending towards poverty. We're not trending in the opposite direction towards success. Right, and the jobs that are disappearing is a lot of the ones that we occupy. City jobs, state jobs, federal, a lot of them we occupy because they're easy easy to get benefits, all of that stuff. Things are becoming more privatized. I think a lot of the city agencies are going to start becoming privatized the way it's looking. A lot of jobs that are being created are more in the tech, STEM, all the stuff you mentioned earlier. Gotta get the kids in the STEM. I agree, but who's programming those kids? If we could make a copy of Quran and put a Quran, a copy of Quran in every household, I wouldn't even say that. I mean, I'm good. We're good. We're not, well, we can't do that. Exactly. So we got to we got to influence the people to make these these. And so you have to go influence the, the people who have the biggest influence on the children, which are the parents. That's um, why we do these shows. <laughs> Yeah, we work back to that. Yo, so, Corona, yo, Corona is a man. This is the wind down. Yo, next time, I, anytime I have a party, Corona, I'm coming to you, man. Yo, promote this, Corona. <laughs> they go five thousand. Promote this. <laughs> this is the wind down. So, any any final thoughts? Because you know we hitting that three hour mark. Oh, like three, three hours. I take it. I take three. I take three. Yeah, this was a great show. Great show, man. We got some powerful topics. Oh, what happened to Lunch? I think she dropped out. She's yeah, gonna she, make a point. She, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll, um, you know, you guys can go if she if she hop back on, she, you know, we'll get her back in. But anybody want to go first, Kimmy? You got anything you want to say? Closing words, Kimmy, been telling. I just, <clears throat> I really just been listening. I just, I don't know. For this part, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't have much to say other than just listen. That's just the truth of it. And I was just, <laughs> just listening. Now nah, we respect yeah. that. Sometimes <laughs> listening is better than talking. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. salute. So, Sherry, any final words? Nah, I think my final words is like I agree with the both of you. I do wish that we could duplicate Quran and put him every place that uh. Man, optimism, <laughs> man, you're a super optimistic dude right here, man. God yeah, I mean, it. optimism is great, but I think that the balance here is definitely this conversation needs to definitely be more forward, right? Um. A part, of, I think, maybe in, in everything that we talk about, this has to be a part of it because you know this is us that we're talking about. You know, a lot, a lot of things that are talked about on these podcasts, as far as you know, our community. Some topics I would say are very necessary, and some topics are like, uh, if we're not really trying to focus on community building, 
And I think that, you know, even if we're talking about relationship stuff, because a lot of these podcasts are focused on relationships, but they're only thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about the future um, when it comes to the children that they can, you know, possibly be building family with and all of this stuff like that. But, you know, on a on a holistic picture, as far as this community is going, I would say it's so funny that we talked about killing the ego and all these things. Maybe it's not so much that we need to kill the ego, but in certain spaces for creating a, a sense of community, yeah, we need to like put that on the side for coming together and having something um, for all of us. And then, you know, in our individual community spaces, yeah, there's space for that, you know, ego stuff, you know, podcast against podcast or whatever. But we can't do that when we're trying to be, have it when we're trying to hold a collective. And that's that's not okay. So I do think that at the front of every conversation, if we're going to do something radical, getting us all on the same page, like this is like when we first started coming on your podcast, this is something we were talking about, that whole community building episode, something that is definitely necessary um, for pushing us ahead, pushing our generations and legacies ahead. I don't always want to be starting at the bottom of the totem pole. I don't always want to be, and I, I'm right. speaking from a black female, you know, I'm not, I'm at the very bottom. You know, you got the black male ahead, black female at the, at the next, and then, you know, who's taking care of these kids. So all of this stuff does matter. That's, That's my last take on that. That's deep. Final, final words, Nick. I got a question. This is probably going to like... <laughs> okay, go ahead. Forget it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And this is for the whole panel. If, if they were at any point, right, to completely eradicate black people from America, do you think America would cease to function? What the? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, what type of question no, no, is seriously. that? No, seriously. Think about it. Think about... There would be nobody to steal from. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that what industries do we run? What what power plants, what what infrastructure do we own where if you do something to us, that stops? Well, we don't have to run them. We what we do is buy them. So without us being no, whether we bought them, we built them, whatever. What do we control in this country to whereas if you get rid of us, all of this section stops? Well, nobody's gonna watch the NBA no more. <laughs> we don't even know on that, bro. We don't even know no, on pieces of it. But that's I, what I I'm saying. Say, first of all, first of in order to do that, you're going to have to define black. And because you got a lot of people. What America you, defines as black. That's what on, I'm talking had, about. Did you do your DNA test yet? Oh, to figure out where I'm from, West Africa? I know yeah, I'm from West and, Africa. That's where the that's right. where they picked the people from um, to bring to my island, West Africa. <laughs> so this is this is my problem with the look like thing because you got people who are biracial who would have seventy five percent African American or I mean I'm sorry not African African African, African you know uh, makeup right and then you might have somebody who you think is the who look just like you Nick and they might be thirty two percent African so what I'm saying is you're going to have to if you want to get rid of black people. You're going to have to come up with a clear definition terms for I'm that. I'm talking term. about America as as look the look the eye test. How do you just no matter where you're from? I have friends from all over Africa. They come here to experience the same racism that I, I experience. They get pulled over just as much as me. The eye test. Look, he looked black. He is black. So in America, if you were if you're melanated, you know what it is. That's I'm what listen, I'm talking I'm, about. I'm not being a um. I guess I am being a, a devil's a advocate or a contrary. You're being a stickler, a stickler. But I'm not really being a stickler. I, I'm really trying to, because I don't like. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I think I think race is a, it's a dumb classification system. Um, I agree. It's not scientific. We use skin color and lookership to decipher who is who. And when you go, it's deeper than the lookership. If you really want to get into who's who, who has this makeup, that makeup, it's deeper than just the skin. Corona, because you're going to have a deeper. whole bunch of logics. You're going to have a I whole bunch it. of logics. And I can't think of enough, maybe Doji Cat's 
the real light people who you think I, I agree. Are black because I agree. they don't look it. <laughs> they gonna but be what I'm it. saying is that regardless of that, this country puts it does. They don't care about that. If you got curly hair and you light skin, they all you black. If you got right. if you dark skin, you black. That's what I'm talking about. If America, they got rid of those people who that, fit that category, the look yeah. test, the 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 prejudice, the racism, those people, they put it all classified them ignorantly and got rid of them. I personally believe that wouldn't have a significant if you could just get over the morality. No, of it would it, be an impact. It would be an impact. You wouldn't what, have an what America impact, no more. What impact would it be? That's what I'm asking. You, you wouldn't have an America no more. And the reason why I say that is because America is about diversity and having the different people here. But they're diverse so this, already. Like, it's diverse. It's di even no, if you, if you start kicking out people just because of their race, mm -hmm. that's going to that's gonna degrade the fabric of the country. And now, who's next? But do you think... Will we, it be the Chinese we, people? Like, but who's then next? they that's have people. industries. Chinese people have industry. A lot of these other quote unquote races have industry, vested physical, tangible things in the country that they're networking with. That if you touch that, dollars are gonna be lost. Yeah, but you got a lot of you got a lot of African Americans that got federal jobs, post office. You mm -hmm. have to close down a lot of post offices. Right. You have to close down a lot of um, you know, different uh, and and when the pan when the pandemic happened, a lot of those things were closed down too. America didn't stop. Well, that's because it was a pandemic, and they was printing but it money. Stop! It, that was they gave you an example of what it would look like if they it were was, gone. Dude, they print money, and there was always like okay, a lot of, a lot of people. Let's just take a furlough for Adam, for instance. I've been quoting a furlough a few times. That's why I will never take another federal job ever. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah, that's true too. But what I'm saying is, they rigged the system for it to not collapse. Because of on course, under any, of course, under of any course. circumstance, think about it, bro. If you print trillion of dollars. They printed more money in like two months than they did in like fifty years. Bro. Fifty years, bro. <laughs> and, the, and the economy was able because it's a it's being held up. It's being. I understand. I understand, so but what I'm saying is that why do you have works. significant investment, whereas... Yes, I would say so. In you have what? Black Tell me in what. You have black scientists doing important work, like the lady uh, from Moderna that was in charge of the Moderna vaccine. That was a sister. I'm trying individuals. to tell you. you individuals. Of... These are individuals. I'm talking about as a whole, bro. I'm saying, but if you get rid of us as a whole, you're going to lose these great individuals. And they and will be they, replaced. No. Yeah. No, you can't, bro. <laughs> Think about it. You will have you will have some whack rappers. Hip hop won't be. The yo, same. I, nah, I can't with the dude, man. Just, yo, the optimistic, the optimism <laughs> is on a billion, bro. There'll be no more dunk contests. Dude, is there ever? A, is there like a downside for you? Is there like a gray line? Is there just hey, cloudy hey, skies? Uh, Do you ever uh, see? What's up? I was saying, I guess as far as institutions, I guess there wouldn't be any. But that's what I'm saying is that I've I've really thought about this. You could say the same thing like, with anybody. If you get rid of anybody, it'll thrive. Because I'm not cause saying that it won't have. I'm not saying that they, you won't feel it, but would it have a significant impact on this country? That would it can't it can't continue. According They're to saying the necessary. According to the way that you look at it, it can continue. I'm. It would be able to continue because I'm saying it's what what infrastructure do we own? Are we part of, I don't know, any major telecommunication system? Like people who own infrastructure that is in charge of major telecommunication systems, things that the like the country would need: power plants, now, we grids. Know, we know that there's a lot of white. Like white people in charge of in these organizations, right? Oh, salute to Trav Simmons jumping on late. You, we definitely winding down. Salute though, Trav. But we, we know <laughs> what he said. Double S. Oh, what he said. What's up? Double S. And AP. Yeah, hundred K Kimmy. Cool. That's what he said. Hundred K Kimmy. 
But um, we know that yes, you know I'm here. There's, a, there's a lot of white people in power positions. But what I am trying to tell you is that, according to the way you're looking at it, everybody's replaceable, dog. You can't, you can't listen. You can't get rid of certain people in America. He's seen, he's seen it's, that it's for the same people. reason in South Africa. They couldn't get rid of the white families that were in South Africa because they own the majority of the infrastructure, all the corporate sure, I, I, the companies. I don't want that South African smoke, sir. I don't want that. Ah, yo, I can't, yo. <laughs> I'm done. Yo, I'm done. I'm taking a knee, man. Karan, you're the greatest, bro. I, I got to take a knee. Let's do it. Now he can't take the. <laughs> he he's take he's the behind South the South Africa. South Africa. I mean, listen, when you talk about Africa, man, Africa has been colonized, bro. Yeah. It's, it's bad. And I don't want to get too off topic because we're definitely wrapping up. But some people say, "Oh, well, y'all want reparations in America, and you want in Europe and stuff like that." But what about the Africans? But what they fail to realize, because they don't know their history, is that all of the organizations that was there that traded the Africans that traded us here, those countries are no longer in existence. They've been wiped out and replaced by the countries you see now. Nigeria, the countries are not ancient countries. Those, those are. Yeah. Fully established nations. So the nations that would have been responsible for us being here, sorry, they're no longer in existence. So who are you going to take? The, Nigeria <laughs> wasn't around when slavery was going on. But we know that England, we know Spain, we know America, these countries are still here. So yeah, it's time to cut the check, but that's a whole other thing. Cut the check. Not, we, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta wrap it up because Kimmy yeah, falling asleep. You heard Kimmy? Kimmy was like, yeah. Say, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh yeah, final my final words. Well, you did your final words, right, Nate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was very long. Your my words, yeah. your words. <laughs> final words, to, ladies and gentlemen, to the people that's still on. It's crazy. We've been having like at least three to six people, like the whole stream. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. But, I wanted um, to say one thing just about the HIV. Okay, oh, can you? I know we kind of got off of that topic a little bit. Yeah. And I want to say that um I know she's getting outpouring of love, which is good to support your sister or whatever as a human being. However, I, I mean, I, I guess maybe maybe I don't need to say this because maybe people know already. But I just want to point out how terribly unsafe she was and in turn also um, put so many other people at risk. I don't think I don't want to say she shouldn't be getting the praise that she's getting right now, but I just feel like people also need to be. Um, giving her the same energy that they would have. I'm trying to watch my words, you Why know, you because, watch I, it, me? because I don't want to hey, whatever. Hey, but man, let her watch the words, man. I Stop need it. her to get the same type of energy that they would have given another type of person. Period is what I'm saying. A dude, or another a dude. Person. No, a dude or maybe a different shade. I don't know, but what I'm saying is, oh, the um. Okay. She was very reckless, and and I'm not. I I don't want to defend it too hard because obviously the men who are sleeping with this woman anyway are also reckless. Like everybody involved is reckless. However, it is very reckless to go ten years without being tested. That's insane. That's <laughs> insane. Do you understand me? And I feel like I mean, she's that getting, is common. That's she's common. getting too much praise without accountability. Without um, what's the word? Like instruction or. Yeah. To be like, like I understand that you're going through this, and now it's sad. I do feel bad for you, but yo, Ability. you gotta have some type of reprimand for this. Like, what, what, what are you doing? Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like she's not really getting that at all. And mm. I mean, Sexual I know the men that she, man. the people that she slept with, must be shitting right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It was that was just that's a whole insane thing. And I wanted to say that, but I just didn't want to cut nobody off. Right. And I think oh, that it's very oh, irresponsible. It is so important that people get tested. That's my my biggest. Oh God, I don't know. My biggest fear. Yeah, and, yeah get I tested. Go to the I never knew that. I mean, not I'm not that. I never knew, but I never really thought people were not getting tested because it's freaking free. For <laughs> free. Yo, they have free clinics that'll give you it right there on the spot. That's crazy. But see that. So like, what I want to say is like. It's not even, yeah, because you got the free clinics, cool. But a lot of times people get tested because they think they got some. My thing is just go to the doctor, yo. Go to the, yo, go to the doctor, man. Like, 
Obama made it so you can get, yo, you can get health care affordably. Like right. there was a point in time where even where, without yo, health care, if you feel sick and you have no health care or primary doctor, if you feel sick, go to the emergency room. They cannot turn you away for no charge. Right, they, for, they for not paying. That's a they fact. Cannot. So you need to yeah. go regardless. I don't care if you have zero dollars. You sick, you go to the fuck go to the emergency room, yo. Yeah, that's I mean, that's no crazy. Excuse. I don't yeah. I don't understand the fact that no one is reprimanding this girl and telling her like I, I don't know if they just try not to put salt on the wound, but it's like, yo, there's still something needs to be said because I feel like y'all would have mm. said it for some other type of person is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, I hate you. It's just, it's wrong. It's very wrong. I feel bad for the people that she touched. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I don't want to say touch like physically. I mean, like literally had sex with, you know what I mean? That That's, that's yeah. terrible. That is, this yeah, is a yeah. terrible thing. And this, this should be an eye opener for men who see a pretty face or a pretty skin or a whatever and just feel like oh she clean because she's pretty these people man. are out not getting tested and that's also vice versa for women who look at a man who think they may be clean yo they're tested nobody <laughs> is touching me without a test like are you nuts this, that's just, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> i'm not yo i you know what i'm so happy i'm not single and when we talk about cheating well like, thanks Ron. i appreciate that <laughs> yeah, I'm full, guys. I'm sorry. All right, you damn, feel I three mean, single people on the line, bro. Like there, bro. Like thanks for rubbing this. I'm real comfortable right now. I, I was gonna say, like I used to always be super picky, very picky, right? But like where my knowledge is right now, like God forbid me and Launch end, I don't think I would like the stuff that like I, I can't even get into. It. All I'm gonna say is this. You know, go to the doctor. I'm gonna get off that topic. Just go to the doctor, man. Please. Like, guys, that's crazy. Get tested, of course. But yo, go to. Because all yo, I kept can... thinking is like, she's losing all this weight, and she still didn't go to the doctor. I know Listen, she was small I, before. I, I get know, it. I know somebody right that's a super vegan, healthy dude. Now, I'm not trying to shit on the vegans. Sorry if you're a vegan, but yo. This person now has low low thyroid and mm -hmm. some other low vitamins he's lacking. And, and this person's supposed to be a healthy super vegan. And, and they went to the doctor, they haven't gone to the doctor. Listen, go to the doctor, get a blood test. You never know what you might have. Get to, get checked out. You could have cancer. You could have the, I know young dude, I know a guy now. He's stage four cancer. I can't remember the type of cancer right now. Oh, man. Young dude, like 30. And it's like, <laughs> you go to the hospital when it's too late. Like, when you're feeling something, now you want to go. Now you, it's already, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should have went. It's, it's about preventative measures. So Let me tell you something. When I go to yeah. the doctor and they give you the sheet that says, does your parents or grandparents have, I check yes for everything. I check yes for everything. You know, Sherry, I do the same thing, thing Sherry. Because I don't before really know. I'm was... like, shit, check me for it. I don't know. Yup, they had it all. <laughs> Man, look, before when I was young, I would not even, the family history part, ah, what's that? Just get into it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, nope, it's nope. crazy. And, and, and now I understand the value in that because some of these things are genetic. So you want to get checked for it, right? So that's, that's, that's all I want to say, yo, to the people, go to the doctor, you know, um, listen, and you could always, and I know Nika, he's going to bug out to this, but you know, four to six months, man, you know, oh you my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh hey, my man. Lord, bro. Jesus. No, no, seriously, Christ. you know, listen, if you can't hold out four to six months, at least you get tested. <laughs> Dude, get, you get a say, test. You say at least see your ex. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no, get tested. At least, you know what I mean, um, have the other person get tested and, and you know, just, just keep... Do not know, sleep with safe. anyone unless you both provide STD hey, tests, period. Yeah. period. Nah, man, period. go together. Go what? together. Go to, yeah, Screw that's that. what I'm... Go, go together, to hand in hand, to the like free the clinic. Say, man. Don't nah, be nah, 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 about nah. sitting in a clinic or nothing. You are getting tested what? for your nah, health. We, we who is next to you. We ain't doing no hand to hand until until the results come in. Exactly. Don't even get my hand. Monkey pox is out here. Stop playing with me. Are you crazy? Ti said. Ti said. 
when he went to federal penitentiary, he said the first thing you do when you get there, you have a paperwork party. Everybody got to pull out the paperwork to show that they, they weren't no federal informants. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Before we get this party started, we need to see these results. You know what I'm saying? Like, so at least do that, man. And um, mm, yeah, I think that's it. I think uh, we had a powerful show. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining. Yes. Um, salute to you, Kemi, Sherry, and Nick just hopped off. I don't know, mm -hmm. he might have got a call or something, but you know, thanks to everybody tuning in. Um, the I think Travis is the only person in the chat right now. Yeah. Salute yeah. to everybody. It and went we'll on back. a little late tonight. Yeah, that was yeah, a little later, but the conversation was great. Oh, look at this guy, Neek. Neek, we're saying goodbye, sir. I know you wanted to come back and, you know, you went My inside. apologies. My apologies, you know. But, uh, nah, thank you for coming, man. We appreciate the great conversation. And, and if any of you guys have topics you want to talk about, send me, you know, send me a DM. Yeah. We see, you know, we see if it's smoke worthy. It's smoke worthy. Got, I got to watch you, Neek, because you... You a little, you a little too smoky for me with some of them. <laughs> a little, a little, a little, just a little, but yeah. Now nah, we. No nah, man, nah. great topics, bro. Great topics, I provide. Great, topic. yeah. great topics, man. But but uh, we yeah, gotta man. have a personal show, you know what I mean? Off air, you know, where we can okay. discuss these things, man. Yeah, yeah, we could do that, and and, and don't and the, the debate. What's up? What day you want to do it? My baby's coming September. So my baby's supposed to be here September 17th. Nice. He doesn't come earlier. If he does, I love it. Fantastic. So we you got, got names? We kind of, we got some names that we consider. Oh, you haven't okay. settled on anything yet. Okay. Yeah, we narrowing it down. But I'm going to say this. Any day in August, brother. August oh, is nice. a I give you some time. Not a problem. Uh, you and Trav gonna yeah, lose this one though, bro. I, I, listen, let me just tell you. Let me something. ask you. This, let me ask you this. What is Lawrence's perspective on that that topic? Good night, Kimmy. You agree with me? She agrees with you that 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 um that monogamy is natural. Yeah, yeah, she agrees. Oh yeah, you, you feeling it? I'm telling you, man. I'm like, in what? How is it possible, especially amongst mammals, that well, show I'm no like signs? I'm gonna expose. I'm gonna expand your horizon. I already tried. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> she damn sure did. <laughs> I'm expand your horizons in this debate, and um, yeah, I'm not gonna give you no hints. Not so good, no hints necessary. You sure, you know. I want you to know what your clients and your documentaries. The documentaries. You're going to see what it's about. Yep. All right. Because all I'm going to do is source you to death. That's all I do. I, I got sources too LaGuardia College, City University College, Stanford University, uh, Harvard, uh, Yale, you. Brown I'm University. What else? Nick, <laughs> Huh? Chad <laughs> said you want to be a whole monger forever. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, shit. And you know you're gonna to have to come up on your stance too, but that's Ouch. a whole other thing. I don't okay, want to keep what going. you mean. We yeah, you got a site, you have documentation, nicely yeah, formulated pieces. So if if monogamy is not natural, why are you looking for monogamous relationships? But anyway, you know what? Uh, for security. For security. That's why we seek monogamy, bro. You just said it. You said you're so happy you're not you're not single. You just said it. Yeah. A point that was would support my argument. You just said you're so happy you're not single. Did yeah. you not just say that? I did say that. That plays into my argument. You know this, right? No, it doesn't. How, okay, how so, sir? I'm not gonna tell you, but you know when you're in a trap and you don't know you're in a trap, that's you. You know, you, I already know what he's gonna do. He's gonna he's gonna bring the brain in, right? How the 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 human mind works and this this and that and why biologically we sense. I already know all of that, but the primal the prim, the primal software in all mammals, including human beings, is not that of monogamy, right? Not true, brother. Okay. All right. Tune in to the next show on Mature Topics. 
on mature we're not topics. Monkeys. Next time on mature topics, we yeah, discuss we're not monogamy. Monkeys, anyway. And is it natural? Great night, guys. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. I got three hours <laughs> out of you. I'm happy. Uh, All right. Salute. <laughs> Later.